Shoot, he's coming. He's like... Hey, Chris. Chris? Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I see. I just took a moment there. Good to see you. They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months. It was just a... Buzz pretty much everything off and all that. So. I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, uh, last time? Okay. Yeah, they have, have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past this double, you just kind of. Just do the best you can, huh? You just gotta go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay, how about you guys? Good, good. Yeah. I, did, I did not expect to see this, that's for sure. Surprised. <laughs> yes. well, well, let me put some fears aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. Well, they, they, they didn't know what this, that's a computer room. I was like, I didn't know how to have a computer room. <laughs> Without computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you, it's a different situation, right? Uh, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore. Right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of trouble at all. Um, and so that's, I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. okay. Um, but why we are here. So, um, so the three of us work from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick PD, different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? Me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey, Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never ever worked a case like this where someone told me that ever, um, you know. And so, as I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so, in talking with Tammy and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, when we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? Um, so when we saw you last, you were talking and talking and talking um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened, and we understand why that happened. But it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. Um, and then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but, um, and so that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know. Um, I think there's a lot of things that you can get to talk about. Um, and so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that, I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? Not, not one. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Shanann's family, um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him some things for me? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so really, that's why we're here. Are you available to talk to us? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. um, so off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that you don't want to talk about, that's okay. Um, we might press you a little bit. Okay. We might say, 
Well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us. Um, if we need to take any bathroom breaks, we can take bathroom breaks. Uh, you know, for anything like that. And we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves, too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this, there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM. Okay. It's, yeah, they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. Just in case. That's just what they do. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things or something. Okay. Well, I think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. No. Uh, accounted for. Yeah, I think. 11.30. Lunch is, yeah, lunch is like 11, but they count for 12.15. So, okay. so in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Yeah. Is it? Okay, it's good like, or bad? It's better, I think, because, I mean, it's... Here, I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like, I was segregated, and it was like pounding on the walls all night, screaming, and just, you know, mm -hmm. just taunting me. From other people? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, they're just telling me, like, how I should kill myself, and like, what they're going to do to me, and just like, all that kind of stuff. So, oh, yeah. it was, today, this, this is a lot different, because, I mean, people here they don't seem to, it's not like they don't care, but it's just kind of like they, they don't take, they don't like judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado it was like, they they knew why I was there and they just, that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like, they just, if they had one second alone with me, it would have been good. They were, yeah. <laughs> Gee, yeah. Must be out then. I don't know, I don't, like, what kind of jail. I don't know how, what it was like in, you know, DOC there, but, you know, like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow. They will. Mm -hmm. So then make sure you were completely separate from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Like I couldn't, I didn't see anybody else there. Like I was, I was, I was next to somebody, but like I never saw them. You just hear them? How did they know who you were? Um, I, I don't know. I just, um, they, they make phone calls in there too. Oh, okay. And they got the newspaper in there before I got in that, got in there, so. Yeah. How was, uh. Have you been able to talk with family? Members? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, we get uh, from 6 p.m. to 7.30. That's our, 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 our my unit's time out. So we get to use the phone at that point in time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it? Or? Oh, it's just like, uh, it's like Secures mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put uh, money on the phone. Oh. So if I call, like, if I was, like, to dial somebody's number, they have to have, like, a phone account set up. Oh, I right. just that's restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh, okay. Have you been able to talk to like family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay, good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they don't hear from me. They're like, it was wrong. Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. And how is it with them? So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were going to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, I really appreciated what they said. I don't know about you. I definitely was, uh, I didn't expect them to be there. I knew they were there on the 6th, on the 6th, but I didn't expect them to fly back and oh. go on to fly back to that. So. Yeah, and then I'll be your mom said. Mm -hmm. That's me. Yeah. Good. Um, well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start or do, yes. you, do you have any questions for us? Right. Go ahead. I'll start. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is, um, and I, don't, I should, I won't make any assumptions today. So, are you aware that this was a national story? After after a little while, it was uh, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Because I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no, no nothing. Yeah, okay. So like, I made I made one phone call when I was in the segregation area there, but my dad didn't thought it was like somebody like a news. Oh. Somebody trying to call. Oh, so he didn't answer. Yeah, so he didn't answer. But other than that, okay, I didn't talk to anybody. But from what the some of the deputies were saying, that you know, for my attorney team coming in and said, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to figure out what's going on. So, did they send you any? Did they send you any of the letters, like fan mail or anything? Well, um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them. Like in with me, so like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like you know I got a bunch of just letters that had no return address and all stuff that was just you know not, not very good letters. Yeah. So. Okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we have heard. Definitely. There was there was one person I guess from Greenfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me, and then there was just a lot of people like writing that was like 
make two markers saying, you know, like you're a monster, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. All right. Well, I don't, we're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, um, what happened with your family. And so that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine, right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. Um, and so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is um, we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters, um, a lot of interest, and then us personally as law enforcement, we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Um, had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent? <laughs> yeah, that's that guy. That, okay. that, that blew my mind. I was like, what the hell is this guy? And we talked about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we talk, talk about him? Yes. <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. Waste our lives. Yes. So Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear. Not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. Um, and if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way, you know. So um, if it's true, I hope that you can just casually say, yeah, I mean, this happened. It wasn't as bad as he said, but maybe this happened. So his story was um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe with men. And so he said he met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and that was basically it. Does any of that sound familiar? Right. No, I never met the guy. Okay, all right. Yeah, he talked about being in a your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards. So, okay. <laughs> right. I never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven up there to see someone. Yeah, um, and so this is maybe a weird question for you. And, and, uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? No. Okay. Ever had a time experimented and wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, he just found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. I mean, he had my phone, so okay. I mean, you could probably, yeah, yeah. probably saw what app I had. But I've never even heard of the app, but okay. apparently, like, he told me, like, uh, I met him to do, like, a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, uh, that was another guy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It was, it was totally, it was, I, no, so did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay. He was like, well, this guy, I'm like, he was, now it's kind of, you know, making fun, like, you know, sure. I'm like, no. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, was Big like, lips, did you see the mm -hmm. his giant lips? Yeah, and... like, I have no clue who this guy is. And he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember. Um, he's, he's, he was kind of meek. Yeah. But also a little bit um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, he did fake lips, or not fake lips, but injections. Uh -huh. He was very yeah. into skincare and makeup. Um, and he mentioned that one of the times, just as a gift, you got him some skincare products. Mm -hmm. Does that, any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. You can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with. Okay, so that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Bowles. There was another gal that you were dealing with. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah, yeah. He had like. Yeah, that's the same picture. Yeah. Uh, does, does that look familiar? That's the same picture you showed me on the okay. MSL one. I was, I was looking, I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> he said it was like a Chick fil A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. And that's just not true. That's what she's claiming. No. Okay. Um, I only wanted one Chick fil A car, how that was the one in. Broomfield, Highway 7. Okay. I'll see. Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just an old guess. And that was it? Yeah, that was okay. it. Um, as these people have come out, for the most part, we've not given their stories much credit. 
and it just creates people who want attention. Um, and so, but when that does happen, it does make us think, um, you know, there may have been others. And so Nicole was the only one. That was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? No. Okay. All right. Um, do you mind if you talk a little bit more about Nicole? So walk me through it, because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right, um, we didn't we talk about it. just kind of skipped on and you know, talked about where the girls were, but so what happened there? So it was probably around probably June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. And uh, it was just like a work conversation. I actually messed with the gas meters that you know, were out in the field. And I was messing up, and then you know, I took a door like, hey, you know, I, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it? And, you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office, and I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me, because, like, when, I, when we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like, we moved here from Colorado, or from North Carolina, and stuff like that, and then uh, she's like, what's all this weed stuff? I'm like, oh, I took out my phone and showed her a picture, like, you know, my girl's on the phone, it's like, oh, okay, she's like, so you're like, yeah, but, you know, I don't wear, I didn't wear a ring at work, because, like, I some boxes would get refitted when I lost all that weight, so... But, um, you lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight. Yeah, it was literally like I was out in the snow one time. I went like that, and my ring went off on the rocks. So I was just like, I was panicking trying to find out like, I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> but um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days, <coughs> and she texted me outside the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just you know, just like you know, like she used to work in a little rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of straightened the stories back and forth about what we did and everything. And then one day it just kind of went to a different different level. And then I never thought it would ever go to that level. But she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. After, uh, yeah, we were in San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June. And uh, we met up after, after, we, got, after we got back. And, um, How did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Thornton. We had Thornton somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other in my whole month of July. So let me ask you this. Um, you tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first? Okay. From both sides? Yeah. Okay. They were just kind of like... Feeling each other out, it's kind of like yeah. I don't, I mean. Yeah. Um, and so, texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Because um, the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, yeah, I wish I was just out in the field more instead of in the office. Those kind of, yeah. Yeah. Kind of see it in your eyes. That's, uh, that's kind of where the past started, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I was just like, because when I was a field, when I went from a, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're going to go, and everything like that. And, you know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. and instead of like coming to the office like for more than an hour. Right. It just gave me more time to run into her, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married at first? She did once I showed her the pictures yeah. on my phone. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. so, so was yeah. your wife in that picture, or was it just your girls? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the like the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married. My kids. Okay. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? Yeah, what did you think about that? It was like just trying to same face, trying to. You know, I was just trying to. Some of my sister said it was like uh, just trying to keep things together. Yeah. Just trying to, she she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like uh, 
just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her, because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kinds of different sides from the media and everything, so. And Have you her, talked to her at all? No. no. I'm no. hoping she hasn't, like, you know, written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Uh, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope not. Okay. No one's told you that, then? No, I mean, I would, I would expect, like, uh, I, I thought, like, Colorado had said, like, on a DOC list, of, if you're on, a, like, a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same. But I just talked to my sister, parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to... Just get some closure? Just to say, like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through. Like, if you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, a different state, if you had to leave everything behind, I just want to wish you I'm sorry. And that's not something that you just thought about, like, happening or happening to somebody else either. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. You want us to, you want us not to. And if she would want to even talk to you guys, I mean, I'm not sure if someone comes up with it. I'm sure if she answered your phone call more than an attorney phone call that she didn't want to go answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that they figured out, I guess, where she lived. And they left a call, a uh, business card there. And she just, pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said, she said, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else, so. And hopefully it's calmed down since, but. But uh, I'm sure, like, I just hope she can, like, move, like, I don't know if there's, like, normalcy for her, not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure, like, that would have been hard if she did. Mm -hmm. I know that Darker was her dream job, so that's the one thing I always, like, asked. My attorneys was like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Where did she leave? Oh, uh, like, the, like, like, an old company in Darker was like, you know, I mean, unless you're working with, like, BP or, like, kind of Phillips or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so Darker was like, you know, like, those, like big leagues. Yeah. Can I ask kind of a tough question? Yeah. Um, did you love her? I felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think, like when you said, like more, more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I never like been perceived by anybody before. It's kind of like I was the one, you know, trying to pursue. Because like when me and Shanann met, it was like you know she was always like pushing me away, kind of like you know. She was sick for a while, right? Oh yeah, she had yeah she was uh, she had just got diagnosed with lupus and she was on like a bunch of different medications and stuff. And, um, it was like I guess I was one of her type. And you weren't her type. I, I wasn't her type. Okay. Like she, she, she told me like when, I, when, I, when she first, because we had met. She told you that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know when we first met. Like it was at a movie theater. My uh, cousin's ex-wife set us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I think didn't, that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know like that. Games. So she was fancy well, and he was in like awful. shorts and tennis shoes shirt, or something, right? Shoes and, like, I should know the doorman, you know, was in a suit. And I was just like, oh, this isn't good. And, like, was it a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? Yeah, it was Kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter. And apparently it, 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 they give you like champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, and, uh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. yeah I, think he came, I think he came like he was going to a... Like I was, Cinemax, like, 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 uh, like, like I was going to a like an AMC, like a white <laughs> theater. No, it was like like you like most watch the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like you know a jack and coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and just whatever. But like uh, yeah, so when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk, talk to the bartender a little more. <laughs> like, no, I'm not like I'm not, I'm not here to meet. But yeah, like it was, I was like persistent trying to pursue something. I liked her, and uh, 
even, even like even on the first day, like I couldn't even eat anything really. I was just like, you know, she's so nervous. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, it was just, she was just like you know, chowing down. I mean, she was like, you know, you're like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's not it. And she taught my parents like you know months later. She was like, this guy just never ate. I was like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. This trash disposal. I was like, no, not, not around me. I was like, well, I'm just nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But um. Yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just, like, um, finally I just, I grew on to her, like, you know, I would always, like, like, with her medication and stuff, I would always, like, she had, like, eight bottles of medication, so I would always get, like, her day and nights and kind of, like, put them all in that little, you know, flip open go box, you know, all that kind of stuff, and, you know, I would always, you know, be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy, and she said after that she knew I was, like, a, kind of a keeper. It's like, you know, like, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody? Right. It's a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. Like, I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> or she's in the bathroom that's all day. That's a good test. <laughs> <laughs> like, that clear stuff that's not really, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it felt like a great, it was a great relationship. Everything was, everything was great. Now you're talking about with Kissinger? No, with uh, Tom Mouch and, and um, like in the first first year, you know, like, you know, my parents never, oh, I don't know, my mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I, just, I was the baby, I guess. I never, you know, for this, I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of oh. like she never like really saw me like. Oh, like, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I, I turned 18, I graduated, I never moved back. Okay. That at home, so and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> so, how old were you when you met Shanann? I was twenty-five. I was twenty-ten. So okay. So no serious <laughs> girlfriends before that. Not nothing more than like six months or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there was there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like you know. I, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann. She would just actually got divorced, and I just should, should never did that. But it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm-hmm. she went off to somebody else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy. The rebound guy, yeah. pretty much. But you know, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted to maybe a more dominant personality. It seemed like it because I'm more of the just reserved. I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. But then, like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed like. So I get that. I'm the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't think that's right with you, but. (laughs) So then, and I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but. um, and, And one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves. Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris is not. No. Like this, this, it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better. Because we never really got that chance to do it. We were talking twice. Yeah. Met you once. Yeah. Probably like three, well, you remember three or four times, probably. So then with, do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I guess I would call her Nikki. Okay. Hello. There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right, there is. Yeah. I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. And, like, she actually, like, asked me, like, like, my opinion on a lot of things and just, like, what I wanted to do. And just kind of, like, was, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Was very new. Oh, that's fascinating to me. And so did it feel more like... An equal partnership, or it seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Or would she say, "I want to go somewhere"? Was it too funny? I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the Orchard, about the 144th mm-hmm. over there, and you know, I asked her like, "Hey, you want to go see this movie?" And like, she's like yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. And we just we got there, it was sold out. And, you know, normally I'd probably just have you know just wait two hours, like, not just go home, but not, she just wanted to walk around and just talk, like, okay. Oh, wow. So that was, that was different, and, you know, I think she wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum in Boulder, 
I've never been there. And That's right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, that was just like, that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so. And then, you know, drag race in Vandermeer. Okay. And I haven't been to a drag race since 2008. And that was in Charlotte. Okay. And, like, that was the only drag trip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the top two mm -hmm. fun car stuff, like me and my dad used to grow up and yeah. go there, like, all the time. And then, like, uh, went to camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park. Mm -hmm. And I had never... I'd, I'd never been camping. I always wanted to do it. I thought it was, she'd done it like countless times. Oh, really? Okay. So, she's outdoorsy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she, she, I guess she, every time like she needed to clear her head, she'd just go by herself. This is go somewhere. Oh. Yeah. But so she's a completely new type of uh, person in relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what were you thinking this whole time? Like, in the, I did, I, in the back of my head, I was just telling myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, every time, you know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, and, like, of my wife and my kids, and I'm just like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself, and, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just, you know, talk to them, you know, say, like, like, I have, like, this book. Uh, I used to read for CC, and I, I remember that book, so I read that to, to them, like, every night, and, like, there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so I just try to, you know, just try to think back, like, I wish <laughs> this ever happened. I was just like, I wish that blinder wasn't on my head, right in my eyes. I would have seen what was going on. Like, you know, I was having, like, everybody said, oh, you're just out there having fun while your kids, you know, were kids and wife were on vacation. I was like, no, I'm just, it wasn't like that. But it seemed like that's what it looks like when, you know, when you're going, you know, when you're going to camping, you're going to dry race, going all of the other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else that's not your family. It just didn't seem right. You know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I'd be able to see that anymore. Yeah. You know, I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm -hmm. anything. Because literally, I didn't, like, I was only at home from, like, when I got home from work. I worked out. I ate dinner. And then I went over to her house. Like, I was never at home. I never slept in my house in, like, the whole month of July. No. Yeah. Talk me through that though. When you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while Chanel was gone? Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane. Quickly. Like I didn't like. She even told me like she was never in, like a normal relationship. She would never have somebody over at her house like more than like a, once or twice a week. But she mm -hmm. felt like she wanted me over there. Yeah. She said she felt comfortable over there. Yeah. So it was just like that's what was different. Like she wanted me over there. But. I just wish that all that would just go away. I just wish I almost like I'd, I know it's hard to, I know it's wrong to say I wish I'd never met somebody, but I wish I'd, you know, maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way. I think if we had a time machine, mm. I don't think this would happen again. Because mm -hmm. some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it wouldn't have been the next time. It just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Mm -hmm. and it happened so quickly that. Tell me if I'm wrong. You're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take control of the situation. It's like the situation controlled me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that, man. I'm, I'm somewhat passive myself, and it's like, you know, there's situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? You know? yeah, I don't know why. It was like, it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching and taking on and just never make it up. Yeah. Can we talk about the hardest subject? Um, so when we were talking, the last time we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was where the girls were. Mm -hmm. But we never really got to talk about that night. That's what happened. 
so nothing really happened that night. It was in the morning. And it was, you know, me and Shaman, she got home like at 2 o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her getting in the bed. And I just felt like I didn't really didn't, didn't feel like I just make sure I looked at my phone at 2 o'clock to make sure she looked like she was in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, I just had a feeling that she knew, like, what was going on. Like, I mean, obviously, I didn't use, like, a, a, an NRF gift card, you know, that I got. And I used my actual credit card. And I, I kind of just felt like something. She knew what was going on. And she uh, she started rubbing her hand on me, and we ended up having sex. But uh, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Oh. I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because when we talked, uh, when I woke up the next, or later on in the morning, like, you know, I I pretty much, you know, told her, like, you know, I didn't think it was going to work anymore. And she was like, what happened? What was last night? You know, mm-hmm. after that, that's what we called the test, after I've gone through everything in my head. That makes sense. And she just told me, you know, like, to get off of her. And she's like, I knew some, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else. Just, I couldn't bring it up, I couldn't just say, yes, there is somebody else, but then she said, like, never gonna see a kid again, never gonna see them again, get off of me, don't hurt me. And then, is that what she said? So I was good, like when I climbed in bed, that was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her, I'm doing she thought I was going to, like, you know, hurt her or her baby or something. Because so, she, she knew that, like, you know, I, something had happened. She thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. So, yeah. And then that's when that happened. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit deeper about that? So she comes home. Uh, you know, she touches you, you guys have sex, it seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Uh, it sounds like you do too. I'm sure, like, you know, Nikki or, or so Nikki, uh, the Cole Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know. That's what I was thinking, right? They talked about it during that whole weekend. More than like that. That's my parents told me there was, like, a, uh, going through, like, text messages. It's, like, all, like, pretty much, they all kind of just told her that it's with somebody else. Time to go. Yeah. And she spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's what we found, mm-hmm. them, right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home. Uh, you guys have sex. And then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up or did you wake up for work? Not a lot of more. Oh, okay. And you're going to work out. Mm-hmm. But that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. And she was pretty mad. I mean, it was, I, I already kind of knew that, you know, I, using that credit card, it was kind of, it was. Was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I like, you know, I, I used to, because I got these anarcho gift cards from, like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that, and I had to use them all. Oh. Well, was, was part of me just like, I screw it, whatever, I don't care, I'm using this card. I was, I Part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even, I think, um, from what my attorney said, she even knows I used a different card, like a blue card. Oh. Mm-hmm. Maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just to use them on the bank account or something. But, you know, and I told her I was going to Iraq, and I told you, I told you I was going to Iraq. Yeah. And it was just like, it, even, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like, just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like, gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me to, because like, it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game, you want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? Like, in my mind, it was like, you know, just, just, uh, just yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't find a babysitter. Nikki. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes off, maybe it just like goes different directions. 
that was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out. It seems like so. I wish I would have said, "Yeah, let's go." <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann, did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said that to me before. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of hard to hear. Yeah, because she'd said to me before she went to Arizona. Because, like, I wasn't really sitting in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slammed the door here. I never going to see the kids again. Or something like that. Did she get fired you like that? Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her that, that way. Yeah. And that was the a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was, uh... I'm back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it was just like one of those, just, it was just a fiery argument that yeah. I never, like I never raised my voice to her or anything and like, you know, I like, I just got mad and I slammed the door and she's like, oh. I'm like, I should have slammed the door. Was that when you were in North Carolina that mm-hmm. last week? No, it was like, like previous to that? It was like 2010, 2011. Oh. Okay. It was like early, early, early. Okay. And her old house. Before kids? Yes. Were you dating or were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something and like I was just like, this. And you know, she was like, you know, don't have that happen again. And I was just like, I can't have friends. Right. They're females. Like, right. I don't even talk to this woman anymore. Right. And it was just like, yeah. Nope. Was she fiery? Did she have that Italian blood that her mom has? Or yes. <laughs> was she always like that, or was she? Uh, did she snap at things? Uh, it's, she would snap at me, but you could tell, like you know, something, something really irked her a little bit. Yeah. It, was, it would come out zero to hundred type thing, or what? Uh, zero, like yeah, two hundred. Oh, interesting. <laughs> she's. she's she gets acclimated about something. She's like, all right, it's going to happen. Well, that's why she was probably so successful at Thrive, right? Oh, yeah, like, she had done yeah. a couple other, like, direct sales business, but this one was just, like, it was different. Why? This one, like, because uh, I think she had done, like, uh, Origami Owl and, like, something called, like, uh, It Works, and then, like, uh, other, 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 a couple other things, like, some bags and stuff, like, stuff like that with the supplement stuff, but just because it worked with her, it mm-hmm. worked with me. She's like, okay, I can kind of like use this as like, all right, this is what it's doing for us. Yeah. And then like, after a little while, like she could see how like, people are above her, how it was helping them. And then it was just like, trickle down effect. Mm-hmm. And it was like a good system about like, you know, commission wise and everything. And everything was just, she could use all the business IQ she has from running those cell phone shops and from the very soft custom shops and all that. And she she business minded. Yeah. She knows how to do accounting book like yeah. in the back of her hand. So it all just like fell into place with all that. So then on that night, was it just a new type of fight? It was. It was never had or what? It was, it was a totally different type of fight. It was, you know, it was just felt like, I don't know, it was more anger than, than anything else. Like, there was emotion to it at first, and it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like, you know, like, like there was no love there. It was kind of like, what we were saying, what she was saying, it was just like, it's almost like we knew, like, something was combating at, at, at each other. And we didn't know, like, it, was, it wasn't ourselves. Really? Anger from you or anger from her? I think it was more anger from me and more, like, desperation from her. Because she wanted to fix it. Yeah. She knew. She knew if something wasn't right. Like, you know, like, when the whole thing with my parents happened, with the, somebody, my parents called them Nutgate. What happened? Nutgate. What's that? Oh, the, yeah. peanut, the peanut. Oh, oh yeah. Or yes. Oh, with the, her family? Yeah. yeah Pistachio yeah, yeah. ice cream or whatever. Yeah, yeah they, they keep Nutgate. I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Yeah. I guess those people were calling it. Okay. But, uh, that was like another out, like, you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything with Nikki and just kind of concentrated on helping, like, whatever happened there. Because yeah. like, Shannon had a story, my mom had a story. Mm-hmm. Like, um, whatever happened, I'd probably ask my 10 year old nephew, probably could tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons, and they both didn't see it the other person's way. And yeah, and like, maybe I, because I, I didn't talk to my parents from then on. 
until like August 6th. And like, you know, my dad took that whole week off. Wow. You didn't have your parents moving on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like, my Janelle was like, do not talk to them, do not call them, do not do anything. Is that what she said? Yeah. And um, the uh, Cece's birthday was 17th, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August? July. July. Yeah. And uh, like, my, my mom or my dad was going to go. But then there was like a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. She had made and I was like, no, I just can't, can't do it anymore. Just like, because he, he perceived that as her taking a shot type thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she always says she never, you know, put those posts uh, directed at anybody. But I, like, she, she had a method. If you read them, you know who it comes yeah. talking about. She had a method to the madness, <clears throat> and you, know, you can see it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's, I wish I could have just took more time just to fix that. Because, like, I was, like, I wanted my parents to be involved. Like, since, you know, like, the whole wedding thing, and then up to that, it was, like, you know, my mom and my sister were always, like, you know, combating with Shan, Shan combating with them. Mm-hmm. My dad was always cool. Like, he's just like me. He's just, like, you know, go with the flow. Like, I just want everybody to be along type deal. She I loved your dad. Oh, he's the best. Mm-hmm. Is it he? I so, loved your dad. I'm sorry, keep going. That's cool. Um, I just wish I could have... Like, just when we were in, uh, we were at the beach in August. Like, my dad was supposed to, was to take two the whole week off just so we could see the kids and like uh, see me. And, like, we have to pick out my sister's house or something. And then, but we just pretty much spent five days at the beach. And Shannon had, like booked it so like, you know, I mean, I, and it's I don't want to say like punishment for them not to see the kids, but like I wanted them to see it, to see them. You know, just, I wish I could have fixed it all fixed all that. And I, I even like when I was at the beach, I told Shanann that it was more like, like what was going on was more like I feel like, you know, because my dad's my hero, I feel like I've lost like something in my life. I haven't talked to him for three weeks. Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing see the kids for three weeks, you know, on FaceTime or anything. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to be able to have that relationship. With and they, she was pretty much gung ho like she tried to kill my daughter. I'd like, given her pink. I was like, I don't think she gave it to him. I know. Was that her stance? Is that your mom put that put something in front of Cece? Like to kill her, or no? Just, just, to, just like like didn't care. Like like didn't pay attention. She she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like people think oh you're like it's fine. made up. Like he'll, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll just have a rash. He'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I've seen Cece. You know, like the first time. Well, I've seen a picture of when he had a cast for the first time. It wasn't good. And then she had kiwi the second time, and then. It, same thing happened and um i know it's real do you know it's serious yeah yeah it's not like it wasn't like her throat like closed up but she broke out in this full body rash it looked really yeah. crazy looking and luckily like you know nothing, nothing with her throat like happened but um so did that make you angry to at your mom for doing that yeah i mean i just like oh, you just gotta i told her you need to think you need to like you know pay attention just because another kid can have some doesn't mean another kid can have some because like we were at that birthday party at Jeremy's that Sunday you know they had this cake there like Bella, Bella wanted it so bad I'm like can't get it to me because Cece can't have it she was like you know okay and all the other kids were like she, they can't have the cake you know but like I just kind of took them off and gave them some like uh, like uh, one of those frozen pops or something but you know it's just like she had to learn that just because one kid can have something and there's another kid that can't have it for a legitimate reason, like, you know, she couldn't have done it, but, you know, that's the kind of talk I had with her. When she had to call me, I think it was maybe, like, middle of July or something when she called me all this that happened. Mm-hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while, and then they were just like, you know, they just couldn't deal with her anymore. And she had just kind of like, you know, they, like, flipped out. My nephew told Bella to go hide behind the curtain because I don't think your mom was going to let you come over here again or something like that. Oh. So it got heated. Oh, they were. It was bad. Really? Yeah, they, it was It was like a last straw between them, I think. Like in the same room or over the phone? No, they were at, 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 at the house. And so they were at my, really at my mom's house. Yeah. Because Cece and Bella and my niece and nephew were there. Okay. How did so Shanann find out about the ice cream thing? Because uh, Shanann was there and um, I guess they were all sitting... Uh, one, one of those couches, it's kind of like a U. And my niece went into the kitchen and she knew where the ice cream was. She'd um, been there. 
So it's not like your mom gave it to her? Like she got oh, no, her no, own she, ice cream? Yeah, she went in the freezer, got it, went out, and stopped beside Cece and started eating. So, but like, it's just a matter of like, Cece could go like, right. Right, if I got. Now, I, don't, I don't know what would happen if she just got it on her hand. Right. But like, I know on like the prick test, you know, mm-hmm. on, her, on the back, it's like a little. Like, so were they staying there at your parents' house during that time? Yeah, it was, um, so they would go from my, uh, from Sandy and Frank's house yeah. for like a few days or five days and then go to my mom and dad's house okay. for a couple of days and come okay. back and forth. Okay. So it happened during that time mm-hmm. when you were there, yeah. Okay. yeah. So there were so many things that happened weren't there. They just were little tiny ingredients to this yeah, recipe. Nothing, yeah, nothing like... It's not as crazy. I mean, it's just so many things didn't go your way. Everything was like a, like somebody was stirring a pot and it was just yeah. that's exactly what it was like. So then I know I keep bringing it up. Can you walk me through the, just the last few minutes before Shenanda? It was pretty much just like I had gotten dressed for work and then like we started talking. Did she come to you? No, I was, I was just right there in bed. Oh, just, okay. Yeah, so I was just like, I got my blue shirt on, I'm not and everything. Was, ready to go. I was ready to go. And was she asleep, or did, did you have to wake her up to finish your conversation? Or? I would wake her up, because like, she, she, she got home like 2 o'clock, so she was she pretty much out of it. But I never knew, like, if like if her plane got delayed, someone, someone always told me, like, she just, like, sat around with Nicole and just, like, talked for a while and then came home with her. I'm not sure if that yeah, was, was the, the, yeah. the way. But, uh, you know, when she came home and everything, but, yeah, like, I, I, I woke her up to talk to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is that because it was just eating at your brain? Yeah, like, I, I knew, like, you know, something, like, that something just felt right with me. So, I know, like, she knew. I, don't know, I just, I just knew she knew. I just felt like maybe, like, maybe the kids weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, interesting. Now, um... I don't mean to offend, but I have to ask, is that really the truth? Okay. I really felt like there was a few weren't going to be there when I got home that Oh. And like so, she would take them somewhere? No, I just, I, just, I just felt like either maybe I wouldn't go home, maybe they weren't going to be there, or I wouldn't be allowed in. Type of thing. I think I saw some text messages where she had talked about um, that she would take the kids to another state or something because she couldn't, wouldn't be able to afford to live in Colorado or something. Did she say that kind of stuff to you, or yeah. what did she say about that? She said she couldn't afford to live in Colorado by, on her own, and that uh, I told her like, well, you try it. I mean, she pretty much makes the same amount I do. Yeah. But uh, she said she wouldn't, she wouldn't want to try, just because you know Colorado just the price of living there was a lot higher than North Carolina. And just so, just so I'm clear, you thought maybe she was she. In your mind, you thought maybe she would take the kids somewhere else or, like, lock you out of the house or... Or just, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make a scene, like, you know, trying to, like, pound on the door, trying to get in or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just felt like, you know, that that was what I did on Sunday. You know, it was kind of like, or Saturday night, was kind of like the last draw. Kind of like going out with somebody and using uh, an actual bank account card and just, like, not trying to hide it at all. So walk me through it, though, because she comes home... She tells you, you guys have sex, you fall asleep, then you wake up for work, all natural, all, you know, a normal day's work type thing. Yeah. What was it that made you think, I just can't do this anymore, I have to talk to her? I it was eating away at me, like, I yeah. knew, like, something, I knew everything that I did, like, I know, like, when I was with Nikki, it was, you know, different, like, I wasn't even, like, in the realm of, I'm a dad, I'm a husband type thing. Oh. And then, like... Like I, like I was saying, when I'm never at home, like, sleeping in my own bed, like, I have no, like, concept of that anymore. Interesting. Because it so was in your mind like, and heart, you can move moved on. Like, it was, it just, it kind of felt like if I wasn't at home, like, I didn't think about it, almost. Because, like, I, if I wasn't sleeping on my own, like, I think there was one, at one point, like, Nikki had gone to the mountains with her friends for, like, a few days, like, into June, first part of July. And then, like, you know, that part, you know, obviously, obviously I was at home. But, like, from that whole month of July on, it was like, I was never at home. Mm-hmm. Like, I never had all those reminders around me. I never had, you know, like, every time my wife would call me, I would be at Nick's house. Oh. While she was in North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. 
and I would like to know, walk outside or talk to her, like when I was next to the car or something like that. And, uh, I would never be at home looking, like just have all these pictures around me, just being in the same bed, you know, seeing my kids' bed, seeing everything that, you know, that we've built for the last six years. And so, did you just want to once and for all get it out in the open? I just, I just wanted to just tell her how I was feeling at that point in time. Like, I didn't feel like me and her were compatible anymore. Yeah. I honestly didn't feel like that because what was going on with Nikki, it, just, it was new. It was new. Right, absolutely. Anything that's new always feels better than the old. Yes. And you were like, probably bitten by the love bug. Yeah, it's not a lot of clear about it. Yeah. It was just like, I never felt that. I mean, even like with new relationships in the past, like it always feels different, like, you know, the first couple of weeks and then, you know. But it, it just, with someone Nikki felt different, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like you said, like, you know, I was more in control and like it was more of like maybe more of me coming out. Mm -hmm. Christian always said, like, it always seemed I was more myself around other people, like, you know, her cousin, Cody, like, you know, like, she, uh, Cody lived, or came up, visited us for a little bit while we were in Colorado for a little while, and Cody always talked about, he, like, called, Chris is so funny, Chris is like, Shannon would always, like, why are you him like that with me? I'm just like, you know, maybe I always felt nervous about you. <laughs> There's only so much oxygen in the room, right? I say this to some people with dominant personalities, mm -hmm. you know. I just always felt nervous. I always felt like I was, you know, I never could actually just, you know, be myself. Right. Nikki, I was myself, like, all the time. It was just different. Well, and it seems as though, and again, it's hard to talk about it, you tell me if I'm wrong, but it also seems, uh, is it accurate to say that sexually you were able to say, Nikki, this is what I would like, this is what I'm into, or blah, 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 maybe not what you am. No, Nikki just wanted, I mean, she wanted what she wanted. She wanted to do it pretty much all the time. I was just like, okay, that's mm -hmm. not me. Okay. And it was, and it was just like, kind of like, hey, <laughs> sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't. But it, that wasn't that wasn't the case as far as that way. It wasn't just like sex or whatnot. But okay. it was me. I was just one myself. I could, like, you know, just not think about what I was going to say or plan what I was going to say or not. Say something stupid or something. Right. A little bit of freedom. Can I ask you something about that morning that you had sex with Shanann? Did you feel at all like maybe you were kind of cheating on Nikki by doing that? I felt strange. I felt like, you know, the first time I was with Nikki, I felt weird. First time. Like, sure. And then the last time I was with Shanann, I felt totally strange. I was just like, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. I, didn't, I felt like I had become people I seen on TV. And that did not feel right with me. Like I just, I didn't know, I didn't know what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. So Nikki even asked me, like, are you, have you done this before? Have you ever strayed away? I'm like, I've never even thought about it. It's like, what's, what's different? It's like, I guess it's just you that's different. Cause I've just never actually, like, like I've seen girls smile at me before. I've never done anything about it with her. It was just like, it's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. And as soon as she walked, I'm like, what the hell is like going on? Well, and Tammy brings up a very good point. I wonder if that last time with Shanann having sex had a somewhat of a role in you thinking, I got to I gotta do something, I got to say something, we got to have a talk, something's got to change. Is yeah, that think, accurate? Yeah, I just I felt like it was like maybe like a trigger point or something like, like you hit the push button on the, on the bomb, it just blows up. Right. Just something in my head was just like something, just like something's hurt. Just like I had to say something. Okay. So then exactly what did you say and what happened? So when I woke her up and just like hey, we just gotta just gotta talk. Okay. And just like I told her, I don't feel compatible, I don't feel like this is gonna work. I just you know I don't wanna like can we cancel a trip to Aspen? And she had booked a trip that week oh. to go to some like mystery four star luxury hotel or something. Mm -hmm. Is the two of you or the whole family? Just me and her. Okay. She had a man to pay her, couldn't watch the kids that week, that weekend or something. Okay. And uh, I was just like, can we cancel that? Can we, like, do something? Like, from what I remember, I even said, can we move to Brighton? <laughs> just to get away from, like, this house. Oh. But, like, I'm not sure if that was, like, like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot. I 
conversation with so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together to not staying together to just like all of the above. Okay. So this is half an hour, an hour or what? Uh, definitely not more than half an hour. I don't think. Okay. I don't think. Are you crying? Is she crying? Yeah, it's, it's back and forth. It's like you know she's she's got you know mascara. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on still, so mascara was running all over her and stuff like that. Yeah, it was and n- nothing, nothing about that conversation. I just wish I could take all of it back, just to be, just the, the whole Nikki thing back, everything. But so then when did it turn? As far as that conversation, mm-hmm. just at the end when I was telling her like I, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. And that's what happened. What happened? She told me to get off of her and up on my hand. Okay. Did you say she said something like that you were hurting the baby or something? So yeah, that was before that. Because like when I was straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got off, when we got on the bed, that's, that's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm-hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like. Did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm-hmm. You don't know if you knew. It's like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know. Like, like, I try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. And just, everything just kind of like... It felt like you had to? It just felt like it was... I don't even want to say it. it felt like I had to. It just felt like... There was already something in my mind that I was implanted that I was going to do it, and I woke up that morning and it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before? It was just like, I don't want, like, when, like, like, just like in the sentencing hearing that the prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes for something like that to happen. Like, why, why couldn't I just let go? I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Why couldn't I just let was go? Was it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like, I don't even want to know what, what she saw when she looked back at me, honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? She was fighting. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just... I read, read the Bible that said, you know, like, you know, uh, the scripture that says, don't, uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she was saying that. I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she, you know, like, like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and start check for defensive wounds, and like, you know, there wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight. I don't know why. If she didn't grab, could she grab your arms, I, or were her arms just, pinned down, or? I don't, I, not that I remember. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think, like, I moved toward my knees or, or around her arms or anything, but just kind of like when I got on top of her and we, we started talking, it was, that was it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like in my head, or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen. And just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could have let go. Did it seem like it was that long, two to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? I felt like it was, felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but it just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like, like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not, not letting go. At some point, there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, how that's the only way I can describe it, honestly. Okay. Like a snap. Something. I mean, I don't. I know. I guess my attorney had said like some, you know, you know, strangulation is more of like a, I don't know, passionate type thing. I'm just like, I don't know how that can be passionate. It's just intimate because you're right in there. Yeah. Using your own hands. It's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that. So. 
could still like somebody was like behind me, just like just mm -hmm. I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you just like maybe felt out of control, or maybe felt like I don't know why I couldn't stay, take a step back, or you know, like even when you said when your buddy was like let's go to the football game, you wanted to say yes, he just could. Yeah, I wanted to, like. I, I've never been, I've been to a football game since North Carolina, so I was just like, yeah, sure. Like, I wanted to say that. Yeah. I wanted to just, just text him, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe she fell through, can't. Yeah. Go. So, then what? Just, um, After, you know, Shanann was, I guess, once, it, once I was, once she was gone, it was just like, I, I didn't know what, what was going on. It's like, it was like a traumatic, I don't know what you call it, traumatic event type, and everything, and like, I was shaking, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think, like, like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say, like, why well, don't you just call 911? Why well, don't like, unless you're in that situation, you know, you don't, you don't, know. You don't know what you would have done. Mm -hmm. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Like, like I said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they're going to do in mind at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you've done. So what happened next? So what happened, Bill? What she said? Did she hear something? Is that what she said? Obviously, I think. Okay. What did you tell me? that happened with Bella right in that room? Not in front of her. What happened? She, was, she walked in as, you know, she was talking about she was pushing out of the ceiling. Did you take her back to her room? I put Shannon in that sheet and she found the site. Okay. And what? Carried her downstairs. Back my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. So then she nails in the truck. Then went back to the house. Got her back in the truck. But it's Bella first or was Cece first? In the truck. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So she was first. And then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put it when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? I woke back up. Okay. This, 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 I don't really want to talk about this part. Honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. Just about baby. I just talked to them every night. Help us see how it's going. Every time I see pictures, I don't know how it's going to happen. Being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's giving piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things. Um, how you get to that point, you know? Well, just, like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was, like, to fight back. Yeah. Like when that prosecutor said it, fell a better tongue, like, repeatedly, I just... 
I just wanted just to bang my head up against the wall. So you put Shinan in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats, or, or I guess they didn't probably have car seats uh, in your no, truck, did no, they? No, they was sitting in the back, with the, like in that, that bench seat. So Shinan was back there too? She was so, on the floor. What did they say about Shinan being on the floor? Mommy, okay. What did you tell them? She'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them, with their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had they had some they had something with them that they carried. One of them I think had I think CC and Bella had like a blanket or something with them, mm -hmm. like a pink, a pink blanket or. What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? That talked or dog. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. One of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. Trying to, trying to, it's hard to remember. Like yeah. if they had like a big blanket, small blanket. So, I think I saw um, on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans was, when you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I feel like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this. Yeah. What did you think about that? What did you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what had happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything had happened, not the definite thought. Yeah. It's interesting to me. Um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together and if you were all going to pass together. That to me makes sense because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? Family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what's going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't deserve to live. Yeah. I knew it was like whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself, you know. Just, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. So, what made you not do that? Do you think? I don't know if it was just more of like a, because with the, with the site, maybe it was just more of like, I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else. Like, I know there's other people out there, not like at the site, but other people like maybe out in the area, like, I didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up, and then other people around would get hurt in the same. So you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there, or an explosion, or something, or just the, the, no, not not for not for that. Just like maybe I could just take care of myself. And not like that. Wow. I mean, gasoline. That's the only thing. But I mean, I don't have like I don't have a gun. I don't have anything like that. It's not like you just commit suicide that way. But so just, just to like, blow yourself up. I mean, it was just I wasn't thinking. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, it was, I mean, I don't have, I don't have weapons, I don't have, I've never hunted before in my life, I don't know what, I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah, I remember you kept telling me that, you kept saying, I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy, I didn't know. Like, yeah, when you asked me about the sheet, like, what were you doing, like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, I think you were just like in automatic mode, or it seemed like. So did you str drive straight out there? What were you thinking on the way out there? It's kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm just like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing, like, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I know, like, my life has completely changed. I don't know, like, what's happening. Like, 
honestly, like I try to picture that that whole ride, like it's like 45 minutes to an hour ride out there, and it's just like, couldn't I have like saved my girl's life? Couldn't I have done something? Why did I do? I don't know. Right. Like this is my flesh and blood. This is like what I wanted all my life was to be a dad, just to have you know kids and they love me, they, you know all that, and it just nothing nothing made sense. Right. Like the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like what. Mm -hmm. So what happened when you got out there? I took Shanann out just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. And then... What were the girls doing when you were doing that? Just sent them back to the truck. And then what happened after that? CC was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No. I put the blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Good breath. I put the blanket over her head. I didn't want to. No. I strangled her right there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? She was sitting right beside her. Did she understand that she knew what was going on? She didn't say anything. And then the same for Bella. Just without a blanket. With a blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. It's like every time I closed my eyes, I started to see her say, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. You go. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry it doesn't really take anything back to that day. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you can say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't... You didn't feel like that during I, that? I just didn't. I felt like it was just like an anger with Shanann, with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. Kids growing up, with, growing up without their parents, they, I mean, depending on what grandparents or whatever they, whoever they grew up with, seemed to be fine. But it was just like it was an anger thing. It was just like. And what were you so angry at Shinyan about? Like if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that. Nothing that makes anybody to want to do this. I mean, you could be angry at your spouse like your whole life, but you should never have done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. And I let it get to a point where I never, I mean, I've never been angry before. Like, and this was like the epitome of being angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The epitome of like showing the rage, the epitome of like losing, losing your mind. I mean, even like some people in here have said, dude, like, the heck happened? You must have freaking snapped. And, like, Way. I'm just like, you know, it's, it's, I don't see it in my mind how it could have, like, you know, I look outside every day, I'm like, what could we be doing right now? Yeah. But, you know, right now I'd have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a, one might be a one-month-old son, and a beautiful wife, and just like, right now it's just me.
I watched that video of you finding out that Shannon was pregnant. You don't seem excited. You seem like kind of in shock Scared. and yeah, like oh fuck. Like well, it's, it's already complicated and now this. Well, it's like uh, when we had talked about it, like a couple weeks, it happened fat like with Bella. It was like we almost gave up mm -hmm. trying, and then she bought me like a supercharger for my car. And then with CC, it was like we had to try and try and try, and then finally, but with Nico, it was you know once or twice, and then like two players she's pregnant. Is that what happened? Yes. Huh. It's just like it was more of like surprise, scared. I'm like, wait, what? Like we just we just we just talked about this, <laughs> like you know. You know, people have brought up the fact like, oh, she she was probably pregnant before. Like you guys even talked about it. I'm just like, no, it's just not, it's not, no. But like it was insanely fast. I give it that. Like that's the only reason I ever gave that notion. Like even the moment of thought, because it was like faster than any other time that she she's gotten pregnant. Right. You just didn't seem happy, like, you know what I mean, like... Yeah, I haven't, I mean, like, I don't remember the video much, I know she was wearing, like, a, oops, we did it again shirt, I think, and I was walking out of my cooler or something, mm -hmm. and I don't remember, like, my actual, like, reaction, like, watching the video, but, like, I could see, I could see her, probably see her like, that. It didn't seem like he was jumping for joy type thing. Yeah, it didn't seem like that. Did you watch the one of the uh, when I found out about CC? Uh, no. Okay. Is it totally different? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Cause uh, Bella was in the crib and it had an eviction notice on the. Oh yeah, I think you told me about it. Yeah, I never saw it mm -hmm. though. Yeah, I picked up Bella and spun her around and whatnot. This time it was just me and Shanann and she was in the kitchen. I don't know, like I don't forget what date it was. Maybe like June. Third or fifth or seventh, I'm not sure like what date it was the video, but maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe that was going through my head. Is that the potential timing? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't remember the video, what day the video was, but I knew like I kind of met Nikki on like June first. I knew like the she told me like afterwards. When you say met her, you mean like went on a date with her? No, no, I never went on a date with her until. North Carolina. Oh, okay. Just like flirting stuff. Yeah, I mean, there was natural flirting back, back and forth, and I was just like, I just, I knew that, like, with that video timing, I probably just looked like I was like, felt guilty for even talking to the girl at work. Well, you probably did, right? Yeah. Did you guys fight before you and Chanan? I know you talked about like not really raising your voice and stuff. Was there? Cause I want to say, didn't a neighbor talk about them fighting and stuff? Yeah, but that was that was embellished and exaggerated. And he retracted that. So oh, he ended yeah, up he, doing yeah, that. He that so. Did you guys ever fight? Did you ever? Uh, have, was there any domestic violence in your house? Like, oh, like this is strange to us to even have, from her to you. I mean, yeah, she gets no. mad when she's pregnant and grabs a knife or no, like scratches you or smacks you around or nothing. No, she's never like nothing. What makes all this even more hard to understand from my standpoint, not from yours too. Yeah. Did she ever belittle you at all? Did you ever feel that way, maybe? What was that? Did, you, did she ever make you feel like she belittled you or you felt belittled by her? I mean, there's always points like in, in a marriage where, like, you know, the dominant person, like, you know, takes control of sure. everything. But, like, you now I was just, my whole life, I just kind of went with the flow. Like, yeah, I never. I never like put myself in the center of attention. I didn't want to be. Yeah. I just kind of. I just wanted to be in the back row. Mm -hmm. So I mean, was, if she did belittle me, I couldn't pick a point, pick that exact point or time. She never really felt that way. Right? No, I mean, I, I mean, I always knew I was like, you know, the introvert, and she was the. She, you know, she took control of most situations. Like when people came over, like you know, I knew what I. How cool was? <laughs> yeah. Like I watch videos of like, like cooking, you know, or she'd make like power balls, or you know, or like uh, protein balls, or whatever. Yeah. You just don't seem like you want to be in those videos. No. Like you feel, I feel like you were being forced to be in those videos. And correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's I, what it I, seemed I, like I to hate, me. I hated being in the videos. I hated. I mean, I did it because for her, because right. it was for for her business and sure. stuff. But like it was, 
know, I, I did I hated just being out for yeah. everybody to see. That's why, like, the whole, like, the gender reveal thing, I was just like, hmm, I, I didn't want it to be, like, some live Facebook video. I'm just like, no. <laughs> But, like, I just, I never wanted to be out there, but I know I'm, like... Well, even when she was, because we talk about this a lot, Tammy and I and Dave, even when it was, you know, I think it was Florida on some Lavelle or Thrive thing, and she's like, here we are, and it's all expenses paid, and... Oh, it was like... I remember looking at you and thinking, like, he is not into this video right now. No, you don't look into any of the videos, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be either. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I mean, I remember you talking about like she would even post stuff for you, like because oh, yeah. you're technically a salesman too of yeah, was, Lavelle of yeah, Thrive. Yeah. Like she put me underneath her, and that like anything like any of my friends or stuff, like anything I do would help her. Right. So it was just you know, I would send her pictures, like like I'd say, I'd take a picture with your patch, I'm like okay, send it to her, and then she'd make a post about it. She would. She eventually. She was like, "Are you going to take more control over like your business and stuff?" I'm just like, "I don't know what to talk about." Right. Like if I want to talk about talk to somebody at the mall or at the pool or somebody about this, I just stumble all over my words and just like they'd be like, "Okay, bye." But no. Yeah. yeah I'm not a salesman. Jesus, she's, she's. I mean, she could sell everything you're wearing back to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you would even know it. Like, wait, I just paid. Right. For this shirt, I paid twenty bucks for it. Yeah, it's, those videos were not me. I just, I did it just, just to support her. You know, like, when she would always say, oh, Could you tell her no? Could you say, I don't want to be in that video? Or was that an option? Probably not an option. I mean, it's like, you know, she would have been like, well, why, this is to, you know, help our family. This is for, you know, to help this and that, you know, so. I couldn't have told her no. I mean, it would just, it would have made her mad. I would have been like, no. I would, I wouldn't really start that just because it's for the business it's for the family uh, I was just going to try to help out wherever we can right did that actually make money mm -hmm. so not only just more sales but it actually put money in your guys pocket mm -hmm. okay. and she made probably probably in that last year probably as much as I did on commissions basically mm -hmm. I mean I know that's a simplified version of it but yeah I mean it's uh, and they don't take taxes out on it so right so that, that was like the good thing and they paid for your car. Mm-hmm. So. Did they give you an allowance, for an allowance or something mm -hmm. to buy a car? Yep. Well, if, you, if, you, if you're a certain level, like a 12K or above, they give you a car allowance once a month. I'm not sure how they how they make money, the owners doing that, but they did. Yeah. Unless they're just like in the same markup on the product, which I probably think there is. Probably is, yeah. I'm not sure how much, how much it costs them to make it. Yeah. Did you feel like a different person wearing those patches? Especially like the the duo, the burn. I, I mean, it felt. I mean, like the Apple watches. Like if you look on it, like when it tells you to exercise, it says I was exercising like all day. Just my heart rate was like up. Oh. Just from those patches. Was it full of caffeine or what? Uh, they just have something. They had something. In them. I mean, I had, the black label ones, the the longer black ones. They those had caffeine in them. But it never had that effect. I mean, the duo burn ones, the ones that are more of like the fat loss type, it was, I could, it felt like I was working out all day, even though it wasn't. Oh, were you tired? I mean, I know at some points, I, would, I mean, even Nikki said that, like, you know, I'd fall asleep on the couch, oh. on her couch, while I was talking to her, and then, like, <laughs> pick back up like I was, like, I never knew I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if it was, like, some insomnia thing or what, but, like, I, was, huh. I wasn't sleeping. We had a lot going on then. Yeah. Yeah, but that was the only patches I really felt like a real big difference on just because it felt like I felt like I'm working out all day. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like they changed your personality or anything like that though? Or do you? I don't, I don't really know. I know I just, I just felt different on those than any other patch. It was, I felt like I could just go longer and longer each day. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, like, if that was, that was probably a bad thing. I, I don't think I was probably sleeping more than three hours a night. So would you stay at, when Shan was gone, would you stay with Nikki and then go home for, like, to get ready for work? Yeah, I'd just wake up at, like, 4, 4.30 and 
go home and get ready for work and leave. And then just work out when I got back home. Mm-hmm. What were the conversations with Nikki as far as um, at some point you guys were talking about her helping you find an apartment? So what did you guys talk about as far as your future together? That didn't really happen until like I got back from back from the beach. So I told her like I you know, I I lied to her like, hey, you know, like I don't like I had talked to Shannon about getting the separation. And that talk hadn't happened yet. No. I okay. mean it, it kind of like not I mean, she knew something was going on yeah. and I mean we, we weren't sleeping in the same room and then she she you know she even mentioned the fact like, hey, you know, you know, Colorado's 50, 50 state or something like that, and which I was like, okay, well, I guess she broke it up. But, you know, that actual talk I had, like, actually okay. happened. I was just like, I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. And so, in, in conversations with Nikki, and I get it, I mean, you're, you're telling her, like, the progress toward the divorce is a little bit more than it was. Mm-hmm. And then, so, what were you guys planning? So, it was more of like, um, she's going to help me find an apartment that was affordable this is kind of just around like Brighton or maybe just close to work like you know, for Lupton or something around there that's kind of like where my area was mm-hmm. did you talk about moving in with her she did she didn't want that she didn't want that would no. you have done that if she would have been but, cool with that uh I, I, I've been low too soon I would have thought it was just you know we'd only been really seeing each other like almost like a month or I just talking about two months. That would really. She she called her house like her apartment like her. I don't know like her, kind of like a shield or kind of like her. Well, she had another word for it, but like her safe place. Yeah, like a safe mm-hmm. place or something like that. And she said like you know people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was that was fine. Like her dog liked me and everything. Like she would say hey, you know. Should be belong here, type thing. Like, oh, okay. So, so you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you? And there was some discussion there with Anna yeah, Meadows. She, and yeah, she had sent an email about to Anna about like how we would go about like selling the house. Yeah. And I think Anna told her about you know get like Anna was always about getting pre-approved. Just like you know like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house, so it's like you know much faster. Yeah, so you can just quickly transition from mm-hmm. one to the other. Okay. When did that happen? Remember? I think it was either right before we left. No, that happened been like first week of August, somewhere around there. I think she may have contacted her. Okay. So the plan was maybe to buy a house. I think you told me in Brighton, the thing about buying a house in Brighton. Yeah, just like she Monday. liked that, uh, that Adams 12 mm-hmm. school system or something. Yeah. So, okay. I think, I think that's what Brighton is. Adams. So. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you called us the school that day on Monday? Uh, I was freaking out. I didn't know, like, like, I was thinking in my head, like, what I just did, what I just done, and I didn't know, like, it was, it was, even, it was stupid to do anything. Just, I mean, to call the school, to call Ann, to call anybody. I mean, they, they were right to be, you know, suspicious about anything looks like, I knew I, I probably sounded eccentric on the phone and out of out of sorts and just you know, I can only, only uh, I don't even know what they were thinking. They heard me. I think they thought I was weird, but I don't know how you would not sound weird, you know, like you said. So So are you Hundred percent sure the girls were still around and alive when you drove out. Okay, so that's completely accurate. There's nothing, nothing else about that. They, they got in the truck. Okay. Where did the blanket go? It's either it's probably in the trash can or something. I think. In the trash. I, it wasn't like it was still in my truck. Okay. We thought we saw some GPS where you had stopped by near construction, okay. a roll-off dumpster. Is that true? or? I think, yeah, I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. So has that been on the way back to the house? 
Yeah. In my neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kunab was there. Okay. Was it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there because, like, in case we had like a spill or something. Oh. Yeah. If you ever get crude oil on you, you know. Yeah, I had, I had like I have like new, I have like two pairs of boots, uh, all kinds of different stuff in there, just because like. It like was one time I had to pick up a spill and I had defrost on and I had like a headache for like two weeks because oh. like the crude oil that comes with it. That. So I always have something like that. So where did you keep them after you took them off? Like did you just change out there into your new other uh, clothes? So I, like, I, I dumped my clothes in that dumpster. But that wasn't that on the way back when you were coming? Like you had already worked the whole day, yeah. right? Yeah, I worked, no. well, I worked like till like 11 or so. 11. Yeah. So that was back when... Well, when Nicole Atkinson, yeah, when she was there yeah, at my house, or Bella's yeah. when I knew, when I was at the house, right. Did you think right then, like, oh fuck, like here we go, or what were you thinking? About? I, I didn't know why she was there. I was like, I didn't know, like maybe, maybe she had an appointment or something with Shanae. I, like, I didn't know. What did you think, like that day, like what you were gonna say, like what was your plan? Were you just gonna go home and be like? report to the police that your family's gone I, or I had like once I had no idea what was going to happen like after everything I mean I don't even know how I was even acting even normal to people that I was around because when like Troy and Cody and Chad and Melissa and all them like you know when they showed up on the site I don't even know how I was even being somebody coherent what I was saying but apparently that understood me so I I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, I, this wasn't like something like some criminal minds type. Like well thought yeah, out. Yeah, thing. it wasn't nothing like that. You just needed my minute at that point. Yeah, it was, I had no idea what, what was going to happen. So once the girls were, were gone, um, was it also just a minute by minute thing as far as the oil tanks? Yeah, I didn't know what, what to do. I mean, I. Just thinking about an oil tank just makes me want to throw up. Yeah. And was that just because it was in front of you and there it was and it just presented itself? It wasn't a, a plan beforehand? Okay. Was there any reason why the separate ones? No, it's just, it's like you said, it was like a going up, just going up the stairs and it just didn't. No, like what Frank said is like I was trying to separate everybody. That's not no, no, yeah. I didn't want to separate anybody. What was the reason? I, I, I can't even tell you. It's like, like I said, like something else was in control of what I was doing, and it was like I was doing something I never thought I would ever do in my life. Mm -hmm. Did you think there would be less chance of someone finding them if they were in separate tanks, or? I don't know. Sounds like a little. I, 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 whatever, whatever my reasoning was in my head that day, it wasn't, it wasn't sound. It was nothing was right. And you don't even remember thinking about it. No, it was just like it was like like a reaction of something that I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. Can you talk about the trash bags? Do you remember that? Oh, with the. Uh, there were two. Oh, uh, with okay. Yeah, just trying to, because like this sheet kept, I didn't want, like when, when I was putting this one coherent, I guess, thing I had, like I didn't want the girls looking at Shanann while they were in the back seat. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do? I put a trash bag on one end and on her feet and on her head so they didn't have to see. Okay. And they were just too little to kind of figure out, right? Yeah, they didn't know. I just know, like when I was driving up there, I mean, you know, they were just, you know, sitting there just, you know, kind of asleep or kind of just like, you know, holding on to each other, laying in each other's laps. You know, I, I didn't. You know, I didn't. Yeah. Do you remember having any thoughts or thinking about why not just putting them all together with your name? Honestly, honest, it was just happening so fast, I had no I, time to really. I thought that was my own. Okay. 
but I wasn't like dutifully trying to separate anybody or pass them away, trying to keep anybody separate. Uh, and everything, everything, you know, Frank Sandy and Frankie said, you know, like I, I, I don't hold it against them, I and mean, they can hate me for. They, they have a right to hate me for the rest of their lives. They don't. They don't. In fact, while we're on the subject, I, I speak with them weekly, and, and I told them that we were going to come here, and then hopefully they would speak with us. And they told me to tell you, understandably, they're, you know, they're devastated. Um, but they actually said that they, they love you. They still love you. And, and Sandy explained it, you know, he's... He's our son, son-in-law, for eight years. I can't just turn that off. So they don't hate you. They don't. That's amazing to hear that. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you, Sandy was 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 the one that was most resistant to penalties in this case. And she said that she told me that from the very beginning. Uh, but she didn't want that. It's God's decision. It's not her decision. And then she told me that even then. So it's not just a one-time thing that, that she has said it to me. Uh, it's been over the whole course of the, of the event. So um, that's probably one of the most honest things someone's ever told me. You know? So it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, faith is... Uh, and she's obviously a believer. So am I. I get it. So I understand it. You know? so, that's amazing to hear that. Yeah. Good people. I would, have, I would have figured they would have hated me for. They don't. I mean, yeah, anybody would think that. I certainly would have, but I, I have to admit, I was surprised. I would have taken back by that, but they certainly don't. So. What did they say when they knew you were coming out here? Um, they just they said they want to know, you know, details because they need closure. And that's really all they want. And, and they want to keep it private. And I said, well, absolutely. That's, you know, we'll talk to them about what you told us. And just so they can put it past them. Because you know, they're having a hard time dealing with it and trying to get past it all. And, um, and I think that may help. Just to, you know, just to know. Closure is, you know. I mean, my parents still think, you know, like, I've, I've told them I pled guilty for a reason. Right. right, and like I told it to them when they had that uh, video video phone thing in Colorado the day before. Like I played guilty, but I played guilty for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't just you know I knew other people were watching, so I didn't just go in and like, just say anything. But, mm -hmm. Like they seemed to take it and okay. Mm -hmm. and what made you do that, Chris? What made you plead guilty? I didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want them to go through this for two or four years. I didn't want my attorneys to lie for me for four for two or four years. Like they, I mean, they would have done anything I told them to do. Sure. That's what they're. I don't see how they can do that. And like you know, that's what attorneys do. You know, like they take their defendant and they say hey, like what happened. Okay, we'll go with that story. Like I told them everything. I just told you guys. And it's just like. They just and they got together like well if, you know if if they ever wanted they ever offered a plea deal would you ever want to like just plead guilty to them like yeah I mean if, it, if we can end this let's end it like I was like in September I told them that really yeah they like but you know it was way too early and the prosecution was still doing their yeah. this guy used to grab an evidence and all kind of stuff and that wasn't even really on the table so I think it was. An, like around Halloween, mm -hmm. I think that's when the, the prosecution went to, went to Frank and Sandy and Frankie's house. And it's talking like, if we can end this, would you be open to that? And that's when, like, you know, like the whole death penalty and everything, all that right. conversation happened. And uh, I guess they were surprised that it, it, it would just be over. Yeah. And we were all in shock, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that was like... It's like we are going 100 miles an hour, and then we just hit a brick wall. Like, that's what it felt like to all of us. So, I mean, obviously you had more time to yeah, I mean, I, I contemplate mean, it than yeah, us. Yeah, I was, I, I mean, I told, I told John and Kate and Sophia and everybody, Amy, okay, is if, if we can just stop this and, like, I know it's, you know, everybody's telling me to fight, fight this. You know, there's no, like, 
there's like uh, they're about saying there's like not enough evidence to such and this and this and that. And I'm just like, no, I'm just like, this needs to end. Like I don't want people to have to because for Frank and everybody to have to fly back to Colorado every single time and get reminded of this. Like I'm not sure it's never going to go away, but to actually have to come and talk about how other people talk about it, have you know. All three of you get on the witness on the witness stand and say you know what they saw, what they've seen, you know, what what they they heard on tapes and everything like that. It's just like I don't want people to live with that over and over and over again for for years. Like if I could just end this for everybody and then like if there's any closure at all, they could you know they could start then instead of like 2022. But you know like you know and everything just like. So I know it would only get worse for everybody. So did it have anything to do with you not having the death penalty? No, like, I mean, honestly, like, when I was sitting in that cell, I felt like I should have died. I mean, I, I was listening to everybody telling me, like, hey, if you do this and this, you can hang yourself in that cell. You could do this and that. And you could, they were, like, telling you stuff. Yeah, like, you could drown yourself in the toilet if you wanted to fill your toilet bowl up or something like that. It was, um, they've been there a bunch of times. And, like, you know, I was, at one point, I was listening to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, you know, you know, I just felt like maybe I could, maybe there's a different purpose for me somewhere. You know, maybe it's here. I don't know. Like, I prayed to God every day that he would move me away from Colorado. Like, he moved me away from, like, the DOC there. Because I just knew, like, cause they were saying there was a hit on me. <laughs> they said if I was going to a DOC in Colorado, like, I'd last a week and I'd be dead like the gangs and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so like I just felt like God moved me here for a reason and I'll, you know, hopefully I can help people that way but like I didn't want my family I didn't want my family and all of our friends like you know having to go through that because after a while I knew it was like this stuff was everywhere and I knew like all her thrive friends everybody that was just like it would just it would just broke just with that hole in their heart just a little bit bigger every time I didn't want that I knew it would have gotten worse. I didn't want it, I didn't want it to get any worse than it already was. Did you ever think about well, you know, it could be very believable what I told him, it could be very believable that Shanann did, you know, end the girls. And so maybe if I tried to convince people that, maybe if I fought with my attorneys on that, maybe I could lessen it somehow. Did you ever think about that? Honestly I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wondered. I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. And what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. I didn't, like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked Shanann. Yeah. And I knew it, like, you know, I mean, through all this, like I got letters from some of my friends that even said, you know, you know, when we went over to your house, we could see, you know, she had more of a dominant personality and more of like, you know, you know, you're always helping with the kids and everything. You just, you know, you're a great dad and everything. We could see, you know, a couple things that I never saw or, you know, whatnot. And even my best friend Mark even said, you know, there was always, you know, something, you know, I didn't really get it with you, man. I was like, nobody ever told me any of this stuff, but okay. But yeah, it was, I never thought about that story and, you know, that's what my attorneys were going with. And then, like, I think it was probably the second week I told them, like, what really happened. What did they say after that? They were quiet. They were writing it down. They were, they, they said they wouldn't judge me. So I told them. I told them everything that happened. And they, you know, Appreciated, like I guess you know, most of the time, you know, their defendant or their you know, defense don't like tell them actually what happened. No. Yeah. They just you know tell them, all right, get get me out, get me out of here. And this is what happened. But I told them what happened. I I didn't want them going. If this was going to go like anywhere in courts, I didn't want them to be under a false pretense and like get surprised. So I know like there was probably things that you guys probably knew that. I mean, if I if I just kept if I lied to them and just tell them no, this, this is what happened, that it would have like made them look you know foolish and 
stupid and just like, you know, unprepared. And I'm just like, this is what happened. And they, you know, they appreciated me telling me, telling them that. So now they, they would be prepared. And that's when they were saying, like, you know, if, if it was ever, you know, if we ever went to them, the prosecution would say, if we could end this, would I be open to it? I'm like, if it could end, let's end it. I know there was like, um, wasn't her phone found on the couch or in between the couch cushions? Like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it in yeah, there? I, I, I why, was, why did you do that? I, I don't know what was going on that morning. Like, even like, you know, her watch, her phone, like, I, you know, if I was actually, like, if I'd planned this, I would probably just take it out to the field, you know. Mm -hmm. but, what you about know, her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you know, maybe she wanted. Maybe she actually really wanted a divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. She took it on the counter. She took it off? Or did I, you I, take I, it off? I took it off. Okay. Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. So the phone and her watch and the couch, was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. That's, I think, uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? So I the phone watch. Yeah. I think I threw the therapy book she wanted me to read in the trash. I don't know. That was that morning? Uh, probably, I think so. Were you trying to make it look like she threw it in the trash? I don't, I don't know. I just, like, oh. I, I just didn't think it was, nothing was going to work again. So it was... I didn't know what was going on. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door opened. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So there was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426 or something. And the garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps, of I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so like the basement, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing I really have down there is my workout, my, the bench press. Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? Did you think about, well, maybe I'll take her out that way or is it a walkout basement? No. Or no. Was it wasn't at your house. Okay. No, it's like a garden level basement. So okay. But now I don't remember really. I'm, plus I, I don't think I worked out that morning. Like, were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like, did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely packed the lunch and everything. Did all that, but I don't, I don't remember about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there, is that the one? Maybe you got trash bags in there? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe there wasn't any in the garage, and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. So there was a roll in your truck. There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement, maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Graham? Um, one of the more kind of poignant or tender moments in all of this was um, seeing you with your dad when he came in. Um, what was it like when you picked him up at the airport? It was, it was very strange. It was, it was kind of like I almost knew this was probably the last time I'd ever see him on the outside. In my head, I knew that. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Honestly, like he just wanted to talk about sports. He just wanted, yeah. he just like, you know, he He's always kind of like, you know, distance himself from like uh, like a problem type thing. Like, you know, when, like if there's ever an issue or anything like that, he always want to talk about like, just bring up, like when I would try to get him to quit smoking, like all the time. Like, this is after like I graduated high school and whatnot, he would. Are you talking about cigarettes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would always like just change stuff. He'd be like, oh, you know, have in the race, uh, football, or something. I mean, he. <laughs> He just never wanted, like, you know, he said, okay, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. And he was, boom, something else. And, you know, I just kind of felt like it was kind of like that. You know, like, he, he asked, maybe asked, like, a few questions, like, you know, do you know where they're at? And do, do, do you think, you know, 
think you know where they're at or anything like that. I just, you know, tell them hope. And then, like, start talking about, just want to talk about sports and just, like, normal, normal things. And just kind of, I'm not sure if he maybe knew anything, you know, maybe he kind of figured out something that maybe happened and just wanted to talk to me as his, as his son. Is it possible if he saw that you were in a stressful situation and wanted to do what he always did? Yeah. Make things comfortable. I think that was a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I bet you picked up a lot of that from him. Yeah, because uh, I mean, stressful situations, like, I, I mean, the gray hair didn't show it, but, like, I, I try not to be in stress. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, you know, I work on cars, there's a lot of stress. It's always, you know, it's on commission. You know, you get paid what you do, not by showing up. So, you know, Van Darko was a little less stressful. You know, I got paid just to be there. But, you know, it's was your dad's marriage like yours and Shanann's marriage, as far as like your dad was the more passive one and uh, your mom was the more yeah, was always the more aggressive one. Was she like Shanann in a way? I mean, were you attracted to Shanann because she was kind of like. How your mom and dad's relationship was, or it was like you know, it, it almost mirrored like her mom and dad's relationship, honestly, because her dad's like my dad. They're both like kind of calm, and cool. Mm -hmm. like, right? I could see that. Yeah. And her mom is very Sandy rules that roost. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. very. And it's just like you know, I, I, I kind of related it to that. Mm -hmm. It's like her mom always said, like she she always told Shanann that she would marry somebody that was kind of like her dad. I felt like I was kind of like your dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't like, like, you know, I couldn't build a lot of things you could, but, you know, our personalities were kind of like, you know, I was always, you know, I think he really liked me the first time he met me because, like, I was um, helping, helping Shan with this, uh, she had got this car from the dealership that she was working, that she worked at, and she was driving around and felt like, you know, the wheels might fall off. And uh, I pulled over where her dad was, and I was like, I got her meat that jacked it up, and I was like, you know, trying to fix everything. He said, like, any other guy she'd ever dated would have just, like, stood by and watched me do it. And so, like, that's when he really, like, kind of, kind of like me. It's like, yeah, it's just, like I, was, I was always wanting to help people, not to, not to hurt anybody. Well, and you helped her all through her lupus, and you're at the colonoscopy, yeah. and you're jacking up the car. And yeah, I, I, did, I mean, any, any time she had an issue with, like, the car at the Dirty South Customs, like, I would just go out to work. And, See what I can do with it, you know, I would just do whatever I could to help. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the reasons Frank and Sandy work so well is because Frank lets Sandy be Sandy. Yeah. And they probably both <laughs> saw in you that you let Shanann be Shanann. Yeah, I just, like, you know, I didn't I didn't try to change her. Right. Like, I just let her be, you know, who she is. Yeah. And she's like, you know, she's gung ho. She's, yeah. you know, she knows what she wants, she's going to go get it. Yeah. And I didn't say, hey, you know, you can't do that. And that's what her first husband did. She he controlled everything. He he tried to be Sandy, and it didn't work. And she and she turned into almost like me. She was like she just kind of like like laid back and just kind of like let him do what he was doing. And then I think she learned after that that she could just be herself. And then with me, she could definitely be herself. Yeah. So that's how it worked. So do you think your dad had any inkling? Because I'm trying to remember the timing. He showed up. When you were still walking around, you weren't in any trouble yet. When Ronnie came in, yeah, I was. I had met with dude in that before, mm -hmm. for like a, three or four hours, and then I was at Nick and Amanda's house. Okay, I met there, and that's when I went to go pick him up. Okay, and you picked him up. It was early that morning, right? Yeah, it was like ten thirty. I think when the flight came in. Okay, and then so from there, you, I, you guys probably drove home and then to the police station. Yep. And the the talks there were. No type of confession from you. Okay. No, it was like he just he was just gonna wait. Okay. I told him like you know if you're hungry, there's like that barbecue joint down the street, yeah. and like you know it's good. And just, you know, he told me he never left. He didn't. I wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's faithful. He was. Yeah, was I mean, I, I don't know how he lasted that long without food. We ended up giving him food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, was yeah. He, uh, he was great. Uh, and the reason I ask is because when I look back and watch the video. Uh, now knowing what I know after talking to you today, I can see how genuine he was. But I just didn't know if you guys had come up with some sort of plan. Okay. No, you, you, we never talked about it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, if I had told him anything, he would have probably just told me, just tell him right away. I think you're right. 
Uh, he would have still loved me either, either way, but he would have told me, you need to tell him, yeah. like right now. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be there for 14, or how long it was, like 10 hours, I don't know if it was there. He was there a long time. Yeah, but it was, he would have told me just to say, just, just to tell you. Yeah. Did you know walking in there that you were going to tell us? Or did you think? I didn't, I mean, I knew there was a reason you brought me back in. I know it well for the... Um, what did you think about the polygraph? That was horrible. Why do you say that? I don't know how you do that. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> Tammy's a torturer. I am not. No, like, I mean, Tell you, me. You answered, you, know, you asked me questions for like, well, like three or four hours beforehand, and then you do the polygraph, and it's like you just break down somebody's brain to where like... Too like, much or what? Much. <laughs> <laughs> Jello, and it's just like... I. I know it's, it's, you guys have a job and you have a plan and that's, you executed it. She's thorough, right? There's no. just no, there's yeah. no way to get out of there without the truth. No, I mean, I, I kind of knew, like, where, because right when I, he asked me about, like, Saturday night, the, when I told you about the rock game, I was like, man, she was, like, going through it. I was like, <laughs> Well, so, we did know, we found out about Nikki right before the polygraph. Uh, I, I figured that out after, after, with meeting with John and everybody that yeah. she had met with somebody from the CBI mm -hmm. like the, like on the 14th or the 15th I was just like hey, they were talking oh okay so you already knew so but I mean I didn't know how extensive it was but yes we, we knew yeah I, I mean I walking in there that day just walking into that room I knew I wasn't walking out yeah just just the feeling I had walking in that room just seeing, I mean, I don't remember if the polygraph stuff was already in there. I think it was. It but, was, yeah. But it was, I knew it. I just felt, I just feel like sometimes when people, you know, do do the bad thing and they stay, like, some part of me thinks, well, I think they're here because they really want to tell us what happened. Because it's not normal that you want to keep all that in. Like, that just kills people on the inside. And I could tell it was killing you that day. Yeah, I mean, it was just like that, the third 13th when I slept in the house, I did nothing. I didn't know anything. I just slept maybe like two hours, but I just finally just got so tired. I just fell asleep. I turned. I had every light on. I didn't. I nothing felt right. What were you thinking about during your media interviews? I didn't want to do it. Why did you do it? Did you feel like you had to do it? I felt like you know they would have just kept knocking on my door yeah. if until I answered it, and like I didn't even set it up, but. Nicole Atkinson set it up. She told me, hey, Fox is going to be the one who set it up. She said, Fox is going to be your house at 10.30. I'm like, what? Like, okay. And, you know, I think I even called even called you about it. Like, what do you recommend that I do? And he's like, it's kind of up to you. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And I called one of her friends, you know, what should I do? And uh, she said, I probably wouldn't do it. But I just felt like, you know, I... I don't, I don't even want to know what I said, what I looked like on there, because I knew it. Some people said it just, it just made it look even worse after the fact, but... It, it didn't look good. I, I mean, obviously we can't say, oh, we knew right then he was lying, but I think we all watched it together and went, this might be bad. Yeah, I, mean, I had that feeling after I watched it. So I could kind of see it in your face. It's like I was just lying to more and more people, and it's just like I just. Do you have internet access here? No. So you don't just don't get into that trap of putting in. Watching what all trap? That, oh. The, the social media trap and all that. No, they don't. They don't let you have social media. Here. Yeah. Like, um, I think some of the GP guys are getting like these little like tablets or something that are like you know the size of like a older iPhone or something. Mm -hmm. but I think they can use like email, but I'm not, sh I'm not sure about like social media. Not, no, definitely not social media. But like, yeah. I'm not sure about internet or not. But mm -hmm. this place is kind of like you know like dead zone pie for phones anyways. I would think. I don't know. We're getting service, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we would. Right here. Yeah, right in this room. Maybe this is kind of like a hub of yeah. computers. <laughs> yeah, that's this true. is the spot. Yeah. Computer room, you would hope they had some. Did you talk to um, Nikki afterwards? After all this happened? On the 13th, yeah, 13th and the 14th. 
What, how, what was that conversation like? It was the 13th. It's kind of like, you know, it was more text and then maybe a phone call, like a, a phone call. And then she was just, she thought maybe she had, like, took off with the kids. Like, just, you know, because I was, I was telling her I didn't know where they were and all that. And in the 14th, like, she kind of, like, I think she kind of thought something may have happened because they had to come back. Why do you say that she might have thought that? Her, you know, she kept asking me, like, some weird questions. Like, she kept asking, like, questions that only I would know, but she was testing to see if, like, it was actually me on the phone. Like, what do you mean? Like, she would ask, like, you know, like, what's my dog's name? Or, like, what do I, like, uh, what yoga studio do I go to or something like that? And just, like, hmm. Like, I just answer her, like, like I'm, and then, like, another thing about, I'm sure, I'm not sure if this is you. And I'm just like, okay. I is this through text or is this through calls? Text. Oh, okay. So she wasn't hearing your voice. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible she thought you'd been arrested and we were on the phone? One. Either Shanann had my phone or somebody else had her phone. Or right. Like, maybe, you know, maybe it was, maybe she thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully Shanann would know all the answers to those questions, right? No, 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 this is uh, Nikki asking me. Yeah, but she, she's asking you your name and your dog and what yoga studio and, yeah. like, wouldn't she Well, she, she, maybe she thought, you know, maybe I was with Shanann, that she was just trying to find out who she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like some some of the some of the conversations like on the 14th got a little weird. I think that's when she met with CBI or something or FBI. I'm not sure who she met with first. So she talked to you after she met with? No. Nope. Oh, she. I was like she had told me like this is the last time you'll probably hear from me. I'm going to stay at my friend Jim's place. All this is all going on. She said not to contact her until this is this is done. She told me to delete everything. And I didn't delete everything. I just okay. I'm not sure why I didn't delete anything, but probably helped you guys out a little bit. But she told you to, to delete everything? Delete all conversations. Did she tell you why? why? She just said delete it. I don't think you can ever delete a text message. We're pretty good at getting deleted text messages. Did, uh, when your dad came in, one of the first things you guys talked about, he said, you know, kind of finally, I cheated on her, I cheated on Shannon or something. Your dad didn't know until that time? No, they had, when I was in North Carolina, I was six, and I spent most of the day with my parents and my sister and everybody, you know, they had, uh, I had told them, like, something like, you know, this, I don't think this is going to work, like, for it, with what happened with the, the nuts and everything, and they're not being able to see the kids, they're like, you know, this is the first time they had talked to me. Pretty much. Oh, because you went three weeks or something, right? Yeah, because Shannon told me to call him while I was in at the beach just to smooth everything out because she was like, all right, whatever's going on in your head, you need to fix this. But she didn't want me to, she didn't want the kids to see him. She didn't want to see him. And then, like, when I did see him on August 6th, it was after I went and saw my grandmother. She was in a, in a nursing home. And um, she still wouldn't let wouldn't go see my parents or anybody or the kids. So... I just told her to leave me there, and my dad like pick me up, and you know, spent the whole day there. And I just, and they, they, they were, you know, they said they want to see the kids. They just don't know if they could ever like, you know, just forgive Shan for everything that happened that day. I guess, I mean, I'm not sure like everything that was said that day when they had that argument, but apparently it was like a knockdown, drag out, like bomb that went off. Pretty hurtful things. Yeah, I'm guessing so. And. They just don't know, like, if they could ever forgive her or not. And I just, like, I, I never told them about, like, you know, cheating on her. Cheating on her. Like, they, they even asked me, is there somebody else? Oh, did they really? Yeah. So I, they could kind of sense maybe something's going on. Yeah, because Nikki was texting me the entire time I was over there. Oh. So, like, they could kind of see, like, I was texting somebody. Mm-hmm. But it was, like, they kind of, maybe they, maybe they kind of knew. Like, even, like, when I was in San Diego talking to my friend Mark, I told him about Nikki. But I didn't tell him, like, I was going to meet up with her. Okay. I told, I told him that, you know, I was trying to, like, I should have just told him right then. Maybe that would have helped me. I know maybe he had he had an instance where there was some girl coming after him, and she, he, she was engaged, and he ended up getting with her, and then they had, were together, and then she cheated on him. 
Is this before he was married or during? Uh, it was after. Okay. But, like, he, he could have, you know, helped me, but I just, you know, I never told him the whole thing. That, you know, it was a lot further along than I, than I wanted it to be. That's interesting to think about, right? You should be actually like, giving some good advice. Uh, yeah, everybody. Now, this is my friend Mark. Oh, oh, no, I'm no. sorry. Okay. Well, I'm in San Diego. Oh, I got you. So you think he told Mark about that and hoping that he'd maybe question you about it? Or well, I was, I was, I was, because, you know, Mark, my best friend, you know, I grew up with him since I was, like, eight, nine years old. Yeah. So, like, I, he had been married before, and it didn't work out. I guess they were stationed together or something, like, over in Korea. And uh, I was, actually, just kind of just came out with, like, the whole, the whole story. Like, you know, like, I just told him my door was a girl at work that, you know, I've been talking to, but I didn't you know just, I'm just, just, just distancing myself from her, yeah. but that wasn't the case. Yeah. I was just letting it, you know, exponentially get worse. Right. If I had told him, like, hey, you know, yeah. he would have been like, whoa, man, like, all right, take a step back and look. Yeah. Right. And, like, don't, like, fall into that trap, being you're going to be alone for five weeks. Right. And there's, there's times I wish, you know, like, maybe Shannon didn't have to go away for five weeks. Maybe we all just went for one week. Nothing would have ever happened. Yeah. It's only, I mean, five weeks alone, that's the only reason really that was even almost even allowed to happen. There are quite a few people who would tell us and who do tell us we need to look into Nikki more, Nikki Kissinger. All the way from the extreme end of things being Nikki's the one who ordered the hit. She was there, hiding in the basement. She was she there. Was, yeah. You know, so the, the extreme is. She's the one who told Chris to do it. She's the real problem. All the way, that's the extreme side. And then all the way to, well, there were these texts where she was infatuated, she was in love, she was saying how good Chris was in the sack, and maybe we should look at her more. You know, what would you say to those people? Like, you know, she, she had her moments where I had to talk her, like, off a ledge kind of deal. What does that mean? It's like, she, I guess after the fact, there was, like, videos of her that she was, like, recording herself because she was, like, bipolar or something. I never knew that. But there, it's like, and she would get worked up about nothing. She would just like, she came to my house once, because I think it was like July, July 4th, I, I didn't have to work that day. So I didn't like get up at like, you know, four o'clock and go home. Mm -hmm. And Shannon called me like 10 times in a row. And I didn't hear it because I was sleeping. And I was just like, and she was pissed. Shannon was, was pissed. Shannon was pissed. And like I called her on outside, like where are you at? Like what? Like, I was like I didn't have to work today. It's like you called me at like you know five thirty. It's like my kids want to talk to you at seven thirty. And like like I was sleeping. She was like mm. she just like you know screw you. Like you know like I don't know where you're at. And I, was like, and I went back inside. Told me like, I gotta go. And she was just like okay. Are you coming back? I'm like probably not. So wait a minute, you kind of lost me there. Were you at Nikki's place when yeah. Shanann called you? Yeah. Okay, and so you were sleeping in her bed. Yeah, because I wasn't going to work that day. Cause was, I, got I didn't have to that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first holiday I ran off. And, you know, she, Shanann was pissed. And, you know, I kind of pissed Nikki off too that I just, that I left. But I think that's when she, uh, I called Nikki later. And she was like, you know, like, she kind of realized that, you know, she'd always be like, you know, the second, you know, second, she said second bill. That's right. Because that's how I probably would come back that day. Just, you know, I, I don't want to be anywhere else when she had calls. She was already pissed. So, you know, it was stuff like that where she would, real, like, she would go, she, she said she would go on, like, uh, websites and look at, like, will a relationship work with somebody? Like, will a mistress work? With, will a mistress turn into a relationship? That's what Nikki was looking at? Yeah. She would tell you that or you she heard told that? Me that? Okay. Yeah, she said that she would go on websites and look at stuff like that. Just to, I was like, why do you even look at stuff like that? She's like, I just want to see what other people have experienced. But, like, so that confuses me, though, because I thought earlier you were saying she thought you were heading toward a divorce. So why was she looking at herself as this a mistress? Was, this was later on. Oh. Like, okay. you know, in August, like, okay. the first week of August, when I told her, like, you know, I had to have that talk with her about separation. Uh-huh. That's when, like, she would start looking at, like, apartments and stuff. But, like, during our July relationship type thing there. Oh, I see. That's when she was looking up, like, you know, you know it will actually work. work. 
And she told me, she told her friend Brittany about it, I guess. And Brittany told her not to do it, but she said she already made a decision. Okay. And so, are those people absolutely wrong about Nikki? She wasn't asking you to get rid of your family? No. Are you sure? No. Okay. And no part of any of this was because she put it in your head or asked you to? Or no, she never, I mean, this whole, this whole relationship contributed to it. Sure. But she never, it never, she didn't okay. want me to. I mean, was it ever like, I wish she didn't have kids, I want to have you know, kids of my own with you, like... Uh, she wants, I mean, she never knew if she wanted to have kids, but she said that, you know, at one point she said, I'd like to give you a son. What, did she know that Shanann was pregnant with a boy? No. Did she know Shanann was pregnant? No. And why is that? You just didn't tell her? I didn't tell her. Like, because we had met... But Shanann put that on Facebook. That's, that's, like, that's how did she not see that? I don't know. Maybe she didn't. She just didn't wait for me to tell her, or she put it at her head. Can I ask you a question? A lot of people think you may me go after me. So what was that? Nico was actually a name that Shanann liked. Okay. Shanann thought of that one? Yeah, I actually, I wanted to spell it like N-E-K-O. I thought it was like Nico that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But she said N-I-C-O. I thought it was like, is that like Nico or something? Okay. I guess Nico is... It's more of like an Italian thing. Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and like, she did leave for, you know, my middle name and my dad's and all that. But like, okay. Nico is like, that's a name that she always liked. Okay. Did she name all the kids? Did she name Bella and Silas? Yeah, Bella, because so Italian means beautiful. Marie is mom's middle name. Celeste is her grandmother's name. Catherine's grandmother. Did you have any input in their names? I just don't know. I like them. I was like, I was like, if we have, oh, like, if we had a third child, you know, I was gonna, maybe we could have like Lee in the middle name, but you know, like, you know, I knew like the girls' names. At least, you know, I, I love those names, so I was like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Especially like with the, you know, you have old names for them, you know, like Bell and Bella Dean and CC, obviously. So it's good, but yeah, Nico was. Yeah, was okay. Can we go back to the house on the thirteenth? So, um, at one point, right when you got back there, Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there, mm -hmm. and then you went in the house in there for about a minute or so before you let everybody in. Remember what you were doing in there at that time? I was, so I went into the garage, right, and then I ran around and I opened the front door. Yeah. Opened the front door for, did everybody come in through the garage or the front door? Everybody came through the front door. Yeah, so I came in. I went in through there, and I came in, opened the front door, and I ran upstairs. And I just was like, you know, I was looking around. Okay. Was that that's after everybody? Did you go around the house at all before you opened the front door? No, uh, I, didn't, I didn't run around the house. I stayed down on the bottom, okay. the bottom floor, and then yeah. when I opened the door. Yeah, okay. That's and I ran upstairs, and everybody else, and that's when Nicole's, Nicole's son mm -hmm. was on the phone, and I was going from snack, and I could just walk through the house. Yeah. She didn't have her bra on. Was that normal that she would sleep in her bra? Yeah. Every once in a while. I mean, she just got home from the plane, so she didn't even take off her, her makeup or anything. Maybe she was just that tired. But normally, I don't know. Did it not come off when you guys had sex? No? I don't think so. Sometimes she just, you know, she just keeps her shirt on and she doesn't want me to like she wants what she wants <laughs> she knew what she wanted that's what she wanted was it just missionary sex yeah and when she when she her final resting place was that just naturally what she was wearing you didn't change her or anything like that okay Did you have to see any of that stuff? Pictures or anything? No. I asked not to. Okay. They said I could. I was like, no, I don't want. And I, and I've prayed for those hazmat workers that I'm, I'm sure it was hazmat, right? That had the they were part of it. Yeah. And, and like, we were all there. We were all there. I'm sorry. Guys, I never wanted to see it. I, I prayed for that. I'd rather have to be there. So I, I don't. I don't. Never wanted to know what. 
what the aftermath was. And they, they, they said, like, you know, if they ever got, ever got like, a preliminary hearing, that I, I would have to see them just to be prepared and not have a reaction, an initial, an initial reaction. But I was like, I don't want to see them. Do you feel like your lawyers were fair to you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were all, I mean, they were my only human contact, really. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of like, almost like a guidance counselor, almost. Yeah. Did you feel like you were driving the bus, though, with your decisions you yeah, made? Yeah, I, mean, no? I was like, I, you know, there was a lot of things I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Like, sure. maybe there was a lot of things they never told me. Like, you know, um, like stuff that came out like afterwards, like the whole like, Nikki Kessinger article and Denver Post and all that kind of stuff. They told me like afterwards and everything, but it was. I always felt like anything I was telling them, they were they were, they were going to do. Like the whole taking the plea deal and everything. I told them that's what I wanted to do, and they you know they they asked me like seems like a hundred times, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? Like once you sign this, like. Um, I guess I, I, up until sentencing, I had the time to like you know back out, but like they always, even before we walked in the court, we're like, are you sure? So yeah, this is this is it. Okay, they, ne they never told me this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. They always just said this is your decision. You know, like if you want to take this farther, we're you know. And John said he, he was ready. He had all kinds of motions written, all kinds of stuff that were like really creative and because he'd never been in something like this before and he was ready to fight. And I was just like, I, I didn't want you to have to do that. Not for me, not for not for something that the story isn't right, isn't true. Because mm -hmm. it would have just only got worse mm -hmm. for everybody. For all three of you, for everybody that was involved in it. Are you still glad you did? Yeah, I, I mean... I never, I never thought I'd be in prison the rest of my life. But like I, I don't want people to have to keep going through this every day of their lives, knowing that you know there's a trial hanging over their head. Or I mean, if it ever got that far, I don't know. Yeah. But like, I didn't want people to have to relive it yeah, every day. Yeah. Did they have to ever see the pictures? Like, say that again. Did they have to ever see the pictures? Frank and Sandy and all that? No. I don't understand. They saw some things. They didn't. They didn't see anything bad. Okay. Yeah. We shielded that from them. That's what I, I just didn't want them to have to see anything or hear anybody talk about what anything or any part of it. Or like you know, any anybody bash their daughter. You know, like anybody to ruin like you know to hear what you know. Some of my friends had a negative, you know impact on her, from her, or like had a description of her that, it, that they didn't, it didn't match, you know, something like that. I didn't want them to hear that either, but like, I didn't want them, like, you know, anybody have to trash her memory. Like, I wanted, like, them to know, like, she was, you know, she's loving life, she's beautiful, she always helped everybody else, all her friends, her Lucas friends, everybody. I just wanted, I, I, didn't, I didn't want anybody to take away what she did. We right. tried to get you to say that that night. I know, I know I but um, do you remember that? I remember. I was just like, I know you obviously weren't ready to say I, that. I, then. I, I know. It's like you know, like after my dad left, we both came in and like, all right, we got most of the story. Let's get to the the true story. I'm just like, I just wanted to bang my head against the table. But in the end, I think you did the right thing. And even though it's hard to hear, um, there's a lot of people who thank you for what you did. I think your whole life has been thinking of others except for one brief moment. You know, I think you really did think of others when you made that choice. So I personally thank you, right? Because it, it would have been hard for the three of us to go through about this hard and for everyone else about that hard, right? Yeah, it was anybody that was family or friends. Right. Would have been, you know, just exponentially harder for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Right so you haven't told your parents what happened? You just told them I'm pleading guilty for a reason? Yeah, I've told them, like, on the phone, even, because they, they're still... I don't know, they, you should fight it. You should... <laughs> all, and they've, they've got letters from, like, Australia, from England. I mean, 
of like the 35C in Colorado and stuff like you know improper counsel or something like that. Mm -hmm. Infective counsel. And um, I mean, some of the stuff they you know, you know they said about you know the dry patch, how it's not like FDA approved, how it can alter somebody's mind, like um, uh, like uh, there, there was some kind of condition. But there's some else they call like CPSD complex uh, post traumatic stress disorder or something like that. Have been like some people from England have had it. It's like uh, they've been in an emotionally abusive relationship and stuff like that. I mean, just like you know, some of the some of the little subjects they put in there, like yeah, I can relate to it, but like it doesn't make up for the fact what happened. But like they've they, they've got a lot of support from they've got a lot of hate mail, a lot of phone calls, a lot of like you know stuff like that. I wish they never happened. But they, you know, they, they get some support, which is good. But on the phone, they still think, you know, there's a chance that I could get out. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to ever think your kid's going away forever. Like, yeah, you, I mean, they, they you don't want to fathom it. They tell me to fight it, like, you know, you know they don't, not every day, but in their, on their bad days, yeah. they'll get a bad message or a bad letter, and then they'll just come over her back. Is that more your mom or your dad? My mom, she loses it a lot. Yeah. On the phone, my dad's usually trying to, you know, like, hey, don't talk about this stuff on the phone with me. Because it's just going to rile, it's going to rile you up and it's going to make him go back to his cell and he's going to just kind of think about that all night. Right. And that, that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Would you ever want to know what you're telling us today? I'd rather just tell them myself. Yeah. So they're coming. I think they're gonna try to make a visit in like May or so. So they don't. Do they still think that Shanann killed the girl? They still believe that, even though I told them I played guilty for a reason. But they think that I was their their words like railroaded by the yeah. kid. Because they, you know, they felt like I they they pressured me to do it. Yeah. To do you feel like that? No. 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 They they asked me plenty of times. This is like you know they want. They wanted to fight, like they were. If I said fight, they would have just, you know, yeah. gone and, on their gloves. Yeah, just went yeah. in there and did it. You know, yeah, I was like, no, I just, I can't have you do that. So, Chris, you care about others deeply. I can tell. You worry about others. Um, and I've asked you, you know, a bunch of times today, but you're not just telling us that you did it because you feel bad for Shanann's memory. You did it? Okay. I have to say, like, you know, after this was all over, you know, people would bring up, like, oh, my gosh, I bet you're going to find out that Chris, you know, used to torture animals and, you know, all this stuff. You can imagine, like, you know, hearing that someone's capable of that, what have they done in their past, those kinds of things. Can you think back to your past at all, like your childhood, and think about any other moments that maybe you – felt the same rage. I mean, obviously you didn't do anything like that, but maybe felt that rage and like what would have triggered that or anything like that. Not really. I mean, I was always like somebody that tried to coax people down, not to like if somebody wanted to fight somebody else. I think I got in a fight like when I was in third grade, but it was like, you know, we ripped each other's shirt, went away crying. Mm -hmm. You know? It was like stupid. Mm -hmm. I was like, why did I, why did I do that? And like maybe... That was like my only like bad thing I did in the school. <laughs> so I can't think. Did of you feel it on the inside? Whether you didn't act it out? Like, did you feel like like if someone bullied you at school or if someone whatever? Like, would it still be inside you? Like, did you feel like that even though you didn't actually act on it? I believe because I was always you know I never really talked to many people, so I never. I mean, people knew who I was, but they didn't really. I mean, I never really spoke to. Them. That's why I never had a girlfriend in high school. I mean, I was always kind of like, just under the radar. Did you feel like you had low self-esteem? I won't say low self-esteem. It was just like, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be part of like a group or a clique. I just like, you know, I had a couple friends who sat at the lunch table with them and, or sat out, in, they called like the fish pond area and, you know, just chilled out there. And I didn't really want a whole lot of friends. It was kind of like, just close knit. And I just wasn't out there. I said people knew who I was, but it wasn't out of like I was popular or anything. Mm -hmm. Can you attribute that to anything in your childhood? Why you were no, like my that? sister was always the, the popular one. Uh -huh. She was more like my mom, like more like outgoing and like 
me and my grandma would always sit outside in middle school waiting for her to come out and pick her up, and she'd always be the last one out. She'd talk to everybody in the hallway. And my grandma would always like, where is she at? Does she know we're waiting? But, you know, it's, I was just the opposite of her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, sometimes you have kids that are like the same, and some of you have opposite, me and my sister could be opposite. Maybe I just drew on that, that I didn't want to be the popular one. I wanted to be just, you know, just a regular, regular guy. Mm-hmm. So there was not really like bullying or nothing like I remember. Nobody ever really came up to me or wanted to fight me or... Never got made fun of, never... No, I mean, I was... I had braces and I had like a bowl cut for a while. I guess it could have made me fun of me. Most kids did. The 80s and 90s were cruel. Yeah, it's like a Jim Carrey cut with a bowl on your head. I don't know them around, but yeah, it was... I don't think there was anything that would... Anything that would be pent up inside me from... Childhood. childhood. I know you talked about your dad having an addiction when I was talking to you. That was after I left. Uh, I left home. Is that was it cocaine or something? Or it was, it was some type of powder. I'm not sure. I okay. guess it was cocaine. I guess How do you think that affected you? I don't think it affected me. At, uh, well, it did affect me, but it didn't, didn't like take like deep down. It didn't like really hurt as much as I thought it would. It was kind of weird. Because when my thing with my mom and my sister told me, like when they talked to him about it, it didn't seem registered. Like I said, like he would just change subject, and like when I talked about it, he eventually immediately changed subject. I was like, because they found like you know cuts on his like CDs and stuff where he would like you know like oh. separate it and stuff like that. Because yeah. he, he uh, car dealership, I mean, find guys that do that kind of stuff all the time, I guess. But you know, he was just coping with like. I never came back home, and because before I met Shannon, and it was just... Did you feel guilty that he's now using drugs because you never came back home like he lost his kid? No, I, was, I never really knew why he was doing it. I, I, after the fact, I knew it was because he was coping with that, but I never knew why he really actually turned to drugs. My mom thought he was having an affair because like, all this money was going somewhere else just for the drugs, but... Like, I'm not myself, I never use drugs. So, I always try to tell them, like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, why do, why do you need to use this? And just, like, you could be using this for a whole lot better better things, you know, just don't throw your life away. I mean, like, because you can see in his face, like, you know, it's like eyes, re- or like everything was getting, like, you know, like the blood through your face, and like and your skin was getting all loose, and like, you're losing a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. And nose is bleeding all the time, and all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm just I'm like, hey, you know. You smoke like every day of your life since you're like 15 or 16. And, like, you know, I can't get you to stop that, but I get you to stop this. Right. And he, he put it away, I guess, pretty quick after I talked to him about it. You think you were closer to your dad than your mom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we always went to races together, and yeah. this, you know, he always came to my sports, uh, played for a couple of school sports, right ball, all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Mom would come too sometimes. My dad was always there. Always there. Yeah. Even if I wasn't playing, he just come there just just in case I can't win in there. Aww. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wondered if they hadn't visited because they didn't weren't ready to visit, or if it was a money thing, or you know, like getting the time or, off. Uh-huh. Yeah, you. Like, visit here. Yeah, visit here. Well, I just told him like, well, we can't drive in the snow, so it's oh. kind of, you know, I don't want. It's These just, roads are bad. Yeah, it's um. I think it's like an hour from either Madison or Fort the yep. way it is. I told him, like, wait until springtime. Good advice. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. It <laughs> was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Do they have money to get here? They sold my toolbox to uh, get some money to come out here. Okay. So, yeah, so they'll, they'll come out here. Like, they said April, but I was like, you know, just maybe push it till June. They said they come to have a blizzard out here in April. Yeah, so yeah. Doing, like, a late spring blizzard, yeah. So, yeah. Lake effects, stuff. Crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how, are you, how are you doing mentally? I mean, the first time I when I first I mean, I didn't know I was coming here. Obviously, I mean, I just when I was at DRDC, like I, you up, and it was, I was there a week. Like first day I got there, they put me through the ringer. Like I had like eleven tests to do, like 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 mental tests, like reading, math, all kinds of stuff. That's to see where my IQ was, and then. I just sat there the rest of the week, and then Sunday came along, and after dinner they said, all right, strip down and put this on. Okay. And then walked out 
outside and put me in bed. And it's like, good. I had no idea what was going on. And they were stopped in Sterling, which really freaked me out. I was just like, I don't want to do this. Because I heard so many horror stories about that place. And, mm-hmm. and uh, they just stopped producing the bathroom and then we kept going. In the prison? Do they use the bathroom at the prison? Yeah, it was like at, a, at the watchtower outside. Oh. And um, we went to Nebraska sheriff's office there and then another sheriff's office in Iowa he used to bathroom, eat breakfast and then got here I asked him one, I talked to him once I'm like can you tell me like uh, where we're going like just the destination state he's like I don't know so there was like a it was like one of those like transport vans like mm-hmm. it was like at just the middle where I was sitting there and uh, I could see out the window and I could see like they would put in an address each time. Like they had like four sets of addresses to each one they had to go to. They just would never tell me where we were going to end up. What was? What did they say your IQ was? I was like one forty, thirty-five, something like that. Is that high? I don't even know. What that's good. That's above average. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was tipping back to high school for real. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> parts of the city on all that stuff. Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of word problems, a lot of like uh, geometry, a lot of like you know patterns. Like if this was moved this way, and then it was like like a series of them. Like all right, what's this one right there? Um, mm-hmm. Just a lot of a lot of stuff like that. But like the further like, further you got along, the harder it got. It was just like it's like great. And it was like they give you this little take take that pen and take the little tube out in the middle, and that's where you're using to fill in your little. Yeah. Little scantron sheets and everything. I thought it was high school again. Yeah. Do you know how long you're going to be here? Neither do I, by the way. No. Do you know, are you going to get a job? I, uh, if, if uh, since I'm staying here, well, since I've gotten staffed here, that you have to work. Oh, so what's your job now? I don't have one yet. Okay. They haven't moved me out of the accept- or evalu- acceptance and evaluation, assessment oh. and evaluation process. You're still in that phase? Okay, and how long will that take? Well, right now, like, since I've been staffed here, I'm just waiting for them to move me over to a different unit. And are you in uh, Gen Pop right now? No. No, I'm in a unit. There's like 11 or 12 of us on there. There was like 22 when I first got there, but they've been transferred to the other prisons around. And what are the other guys like? They're, like, they're fine. Like, the first time, like, I sat out and ate, like, a breakfast or lunch with them, I was, I was... I mean, they scared. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, this, this, this hasn't happened, like, nonsense. You know, this never happened. Yeah. Like, they're like, like I said, they locked, they locked the hallways down. And like, I moved to Colorado. Yeah, well, I heard that. Yeah. So it was like, you know, being next, like, right, like this, eating next to somebody, I was just like, is he going to, like, take a spork and try to stab me or something? Or what? But it's totally different here. I mean, people know who I am, but, like, they don't, like, you know, run at me or jump at me or like apparently they um, the guys that work here they they know that I guess other maxes are like you lock down like 23 22 hours a day oh so then this is an all right place to be for like, like other max for other max guys good yeah. oh, they said it's the best max but the worst medium oh because uh, if, if you're max you're working so you're you know out of your cell working like mm-hmm. you know if you're a clerk or if you're in the kitchen or mm-hmm. if you're in the rec area you're doing something okay but um, yeah they said like if you get stabbed here it's, it'll be best for you plus they said it's not as like rowdy as some of the other places yeah oh, that's pretty intense yeah so like I mean I'm, I'm going to the GP area I just don't know when and you think it'll be while you're here mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, they said like uh, I guess it could take you know it takes a lot to get moved from max to medium because in Colorado I was classified as minimum restrictive, mm-hmm. but with the charges it would have been medium. But here it's automatically max. Mm-hmm. And what are the other guys in Fort? You know, uh, they said most guys in here are for like gang snitches and uh, sex offenders and mainly people that have twenty years. In so people who were in for a long time and who would otherwise have a pretty hard time at a jail yeah. for whatever they did, yeah. whether it be snitching or, or yeah, like, you know, children. Or, yeah, or there's uh, some people from other states here as well. And, um, I guess there's a couple cops here too. Okay. Just, you know, just things that happened and they just don't think it'd be better. It'd be a lot better if they're here or not. Than another, really, you know. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of 
kind of jobs are available? Well, it's um, like they'll they'll probably have me in the kitchen, or like that's where everybody starts out, like mm -hmm. either washing dishes or like you know putting food on the trays or helping you know, pots and pans, something like that. Mm -hmm. But they have like libraries. They have like you know, I think this is the PSU area, the psych area. So they'll have like different guys doing clerk stuff around here. I mean, they've I didn't, they have over like 300 GP guys here that are like live here. So they have a job for every one of them. Wow. There's even a guy that shovels the sidewalks. I think we saw him. We yeah, saw I saw him. him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want. I don't know if I want to be that guy. <laughs> Not here. Do you? Um, do you go to therapy? Do you have see a psychologist? There's, there's actually the one I, uh, her name's like a Javier or something like that. She's uh, she seems like once a month, and she's actually from Aurora. Really? Yeah, it was weird. I walked in, I saw a Bronco flag. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, okay, who are you? But um, yeah, it's. Does she give you therapy? Or? No, she just like talks to me just to see if I need anything or if like. Like if I need psych meds or if I need anything like that, which I've declined all that stuff. But most people in my unit have meds. That's just to have them, or do you think they need them? Well, it's like a special management unit. Like they just put me on there to keep me away from DP. And like most people are either like just have like some type of medication they're on. But you don't take anything. No, they just keep me on there until the security advisor says you know you can get moved to keep me down the hall. What kind of stuff, like food and stuff, do you miss the most from the outside? Food? Yeah. Well, I know from, you know, my last time in North Carolina, Bojangles, that was really good. I don't know if you guys ever, ever go to North Carolina? Or no? Mm -hmm. Is that barbecue? It's like, it's chicken and biscuits. Mm -hmm. And that barbecue place down the street from the PD. Mm -hmm. I forget what. Smokehouse? Yeah. George Boys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the burn ends. I miss that. And just, you know, you know, I miss dance cooking. That's for sure, like her spaghetti sauce and her fried pizza. Yeah. Fried pizza. I don't think yeah. I've heard of that. What is I've that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> so her mom has, or I think it was her, her mom, her grandmother on her mom's side had this like pizza, or this dough, uh, homemade dough you can make and uh, just make up the dough and she would make it up with Bella and stuff sometimes, like a little smaller one, but she would make a really big one. And then um, she would, uh, Put it in the oven, the bottom oven, and let it sit there for a couple hours, not with it on or anything, just let it rise. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once it's done, take it out, form it, throw the the spaghetti sauce she has, and spread it around, and throw the mozzarella and pepperoni, and put it on the oven 350. And but what part of it is fried though? Well, they have some parts that you put on the grill. You can put oh. on the okay. Put it on the uh, stove too. Okay. It's pretty. It's really good. I mean, it's really thick. Yeah. So you got Apparently, we need this. Right? Yeah. Sandy. <laughs> I've been working on that. Yes. <laughs> right and <laughs> no. Yeah. Are you able to stay out of trouble here? Yeah. Uh, no. Nobody's getting any fights. Nobody's. You're not getting written up for anything. You're not getting. Okay. I try to keep a low profile here, so I don't want to. Guess they say if you get like two conduct reports, they'll ship you out if you work here. Pay so another, to another location. Yeah. Oh, so then, does that incentivize people? Put their nose down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I guess a couple guys got busted for having a cell phone. Oh. Yeah. How they got it in. No kidding. Yeah. Like that stuff just baffles my mind. How that stuff gets to. <laughs> I mean, they, they won't even let like if somebody sends me a letter and it has like even like someone sent me a Christmas card with glitter on it. They'll let me have it because glitter. Because mm -hmm. like it's contraband. So like yeah, I don't have people get cell phones and stuff in here. So what do you do with all these letters that are coming into you? Most of them, like, I just have, like, this, if somebody writes me once, I'll never write them, just because I don't know, like, who they are, like, where they're from. I'll keep it. If it's, a, if it's like, a weird letter, I'll straight that throw it away. If it's, like, a supportive letter, I'll keep it around, just, like, you know, a supportive letter. And then, like, like, I've had some people, like, write me, like, a second and third time, but they've changed the way they talk, or, like, they've said different things. Like, there's, there's like, this... This dude in like California that that wrote me, he's like a he's a senior in high school, and wrote me. He's like, okay, dude. I, I look at the name, like, okay. shred it up, threw it away. He wrote me again, like like two weeks ago, totally different. Like never mentioned like his age, never mentioned his studying. Like, hey, like I support you. I'm like all this, like that. 
like if I didn't recognize his name, I wouldn't know like he was just an eighteen year old kid, senior trying to trying to just like probably just get information. Trying to you know, because there's there's been like journalists and like mm-hmm. other people like like you can kind of tell like they ask a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. But I try to like take into effect who's writing me and like just not to respond. Like I've responded to a few people just because like either my parents have talked to them on the outside and then I kind of know okay it's a real person. Oh. But like there's some people that like it seems like they're just trying like to get help from themselves too. Like s- some people ask like you know like like just for spiritual advice. They're asking for spiritual yeah. advice from you. Yeah. yeah like you know if they're not asking about the case I'll write them back. They ask about the case I'll write them back. Yeah. You think you'll be in love again? There's a lot of women out there that are in love with you. No. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not the guy that's down the street going to do whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard enough about that guy. Here. What, are you, what have you heard about him? He got engaged over a letter. He did, yeah. That, that's pretty insane. But yeah, I don't see myself being a letter ever again. Do you have some ladies that are giving you a lot of like just telling them that, telling you that they're in love with you and that kind of stuff. Well, I've had a couple letters that have been like, you know, I hear you get a lot of letters from like from lady friends that tell you all you need to know. And I'm like, I, just, I don't get those letters. Trust me. Like there was, I guess there was one letter in Colorado. Someone sent me a picture of them in the key, and then it's like went on from there. That was like the only letter I ever got. That was like that. But the press took it and just went with it. Yeah. Hey, Did you, you ever get a request from the press? Mm-hmm. And how does that work? Tear it up. Or, uh, oh, you, so are you personally already planning? Well, I, I don't like, you know, kind of back. Would they allow you to talk with them? Mm-hmm. Would they allow them in here to talk with you? I don't know. Uh, I guess some stations have asked to come in here and talk to me, but they have told them no. Oh. But they're, uh, I've gotten letters from like, you know, Denver, like Denver stations and whatnot wanting to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And then quotation marks off the record. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Anything I write. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, I just tear it up, throw it away. Have you thought about, like, writing a book or anything like that? No, that's, you know, I, nothing like that. My what mom you, my mom and dad, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. My mom and dad are saying maybe you should, like, write down, like, how you feel or, like, you know, how you've been dealing with this type thing. Just write it down and that would be my story, but I'm just like, I'm not writing that's not me. I mean, I've always been had a really crazy imagination. So, like when I was a kid, like I even convinced my teacher I was going to I went to Japan over the summer or to China or something. But she said, you know, like you know, you should write down like you know your story, like how you cope with this. Why did you convince your teacher you had gone to another country? It was just like what you did over the summer, and I was like, oh, went to China. I went to start right. <laughs> <laughs> and she actually believed it. I, I was really convincing. So well, you're a smart dude. Yeah. It was, it was, and they, my parent teacher conference said, so how was China? Like, <laughs> nope. So earlier you were talking about how like, this experience you're going to want to help people. What do you mean by that? So like, like, this couple letters that I've gotten, like, this one, this one girl, she's in like an abusive relationship and she just can't find a relationship, like, with God, and like I've been, I've read, I never read the Bible before, before all this, like mm-hmm. in, well, county I read it, because, you know, okay. in the segregation whole there, it was like, that was the book I got, and I was like, okay, I, I read it cover to cover, and I never thought I could, being how, how many pages were in the Bible, but right. it stuck with me, and like I've been reading it more and more here, like I got a different version here, I've just been reading it, and just writing down, and like, couple scriptures a day, like to get my mom and my dad, mm-hmm. and they've been like making a little journal and stuff like that. And my uncle Johnny and uh, his wife, um, Martha, they're actually uh, missionaries, and um, and one of my cousins is actually as well, and they've been helping my mom and dad, and they've been, they, they, they looked at a couple of my letters, and they're, they're, they're amazed at how, like, how mature I've gotten with, like, the Bible and everything, the scripture, man. It's just like one thing, one gift that I did get was a good memory as far as like being able to memorize stuff, right? 
And like that's what happened with cars and with the oil foot, I can just memorize acronyms like that. And I've been memorizing a lot of different scripts. I can just kind of like help people that way. And just like there's been inmates that have left my unit and went to a different place and have written me just asked like, you know, can you give me a couple of scriptures to help me through this? Like, do you know any? And I just you know, I can help somebody that way. Yeah, that's good. Do you get to go to school or anything? They don't have any of those programs here. Oh, they don't? It's a accept or evaluation prison, so they don't. This is, I think this is when they have a sex offender class in here. Mm. That's the only thing they really have. Do you get to go to that? No. <laughs> no, I, I always ask, like, why are people going there? And they're like, you don't want to go in that class. Like, oh, <laughs> you stay away from that okay. class. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing they have here, but they have other... Like that's like the map of the prisons they have here. Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. Oh yeah. wow. They have a lot here. Yeah. Like three right in this area. Yep, they're around here. I was just amazed that when I one thing I did see out the window when I first there was like a neighborhood that's right next to the prison. Yeah, so just like it's happened. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Is that weird. Because <laughs> yeah. like in Colorado it seemed like they're all like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Well, um, we might take a little break right now. Well, I think it's almost time for you to eat lunch. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. Yeah. But like the polygraph. <laughs> Everything just like... <laughs> 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 I look up the time, I'm like, oh, wow. This went four hours. Here we go. <laughs> they might let us come back and talk to you. Okay. Um, there might be a couple more things you want to go over. Okay. Is that something you're up for? That's fine. Okay. And then the other thing is, we might be back in a month, in a year, in two years. If you're up for it. Okay. Now that's way down the road, but I guess maybe in the back of your mind, just think about that. And, um, I hope so far today's been all right for you. Yeah, it's been. Honestly, when I walked in, I was just like, wait, I know these, Where do I know these guys. <laughs> I looked at you, I'm like, like that. that's not the site counselor. That's, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're Colorado people. Because I looked past that A&E sergeant. I was like, all right, who am I meeting? I, I go, oh, it's not the A&E sergeant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, there's a possibility we might not make it back today. I just want to let you know, but okay. we might. Um, so uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah. Total took me off guard. I had no idea. So that yeah. Was yeah. And again, um, this isn't it. Your case is over. It's closed. So that's not that's not what today's about. Yeah. We really appreciate it. You know a lot of things really well, really well, really good. You made a lot of good decisions. And obviously, we're here because of just okay. one bad decision, but. I think that you've taken steps to get past that. Um, so, yeah, we might come back after one night for lunch, if that's all right. That's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can grab somebody. Are you going to you guys planned or? Uh, I think I had the better drive. <laughs> I think you probably did, yeah. <laughs> I was like 50 minutes. It was, it was like two hours. Yeah, it's snowing. Snow. It's pretty nasty. Lake effect. Out there. Yeah, the wind's blowing. Not like wind like Colorado then? It was a hell of a lot colder. Yeah. Well, and yeah, the roads aren't getting cleared like they would get cleared in Colorado. Yeah. I think they just have so much. Yeah, it just there. comes in and it just dumps. Yeah. Colorado just melts within a couple hours right. here. Just, honestly, I haven't seen it melt here since I've Well, that's the thing. Everyone's yeah, houses piles. are just piled, you know, like, yeah. oh, it's the next snow when they just pile it on <laughs> top. So it doesn't look like anything melts. No. <laughs> it's just the problem. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys go outside for rec or anything? Or? No, not when it's. It has to be over 50 degrees. Oh, so you won't be out for a while. <laughs> no, they have like a rec, uh, like a little basketball court down the hall from where my unit is. So we get there about five days a week for like 40 minutes. Nice. So it's a good chance to just get out and just run around a little bit, and mm -hmm. just stretch your legs a little bit. Yeah. Any weights or anything you can use? Yeah, there's some weights in there. We go with another unit, and they're uh, the infirmary unit that, go with, that goes with us, and most of them are like in wheelchairs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like, I just let them do. I don't want to get like get in the way. Just like let them like there's like the pull downs and the, the right lats and all that kind of road machine and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah but I think they have like a track or something like that you can run around. Yeah. Uh, once we go outside. Mm-hmm.
Colorado, they let you go outside. Like, I never went outside, but like at the DRDC, they just said, do you want to go outside? Let's go outside. That's cold. <laughs> Fire <laughs> beware. It was like, hey, want to wreck today? You're like, no. <laughs> No, it's, like, it's like 30 degrees outside. You can go outside if you want. Like, okay. But their, their version of rec was like they put you out in a little cage and let you like kind of walk around for a little bit. Yeah. At the RDC. It was a little different there. Hey, if we don't want to come back, I just want to let you know I talked to your dad the other day. Okay. And, and just to get your property released to him. Oh, that phone and stuff? Yeah, okay. your phone and, and um, what else? Did you wallet. Your wallet. Okay. Yeah, and we have some other things too. So. Okay. But I have to wait for the DA to release all that stuff and okay. red tape crap. So. Gotcha. But then we'll, get, we'll, we'll send it off to him. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know he wanted my phone. Just the yeah. design pictures on there. That's what he said. I think I had that phone since like 2016, so there's a, there's a good amount on there. Yeah. If we don't make it back today, it's going to be because of some of their scheduling. It's not that we don't want to talk to you tomorrow. Is this fine? There's more things we can't talk about. Okay. Um, but if we don't make it back, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's a holiday, so I figured they'd be pretty much open. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't see many people walking through the hallways when they came down here. Usually there's a ton. Mm -hmm. Of visitors or what? No, just a ton of people, just like workers walking up and down. It oh, seemed pretty I see. sparse. Yeah, it did seem sparse, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That was one thing I was shocked about when I walked around here. I was always used to seeing everybody in handcuffs walking around the hallways. Mm -hmm. Here. That is interesting, man. I thought the same thing. I couldn't tell who was who. Yeah, it's like you, you can't necessarily you tell. Got, you see the red tag, it's like an inmate, but somebody else is somebody that works here. Oh. Or like somebody that's like actual civilian works here. So then you're not in shackles and handcuffs that often? I haven't been since I got here. You're kidding. Huh. That was, that's, that's why I was amazed. I was like, when the guy took me in the hallway, I was like, anything? No, just keep walking. Yeah. It's, that's, the, that's my psych was saying, this is Max when she first got here. Like, no, it's, it's like Max or something. Hmm. They just like, you know, if, if you if you want to act up, they'll put they'll you in. use it. You'll learn those shackles back. Oh, yeah, they, they'll put you in handcuffs, take you to the hole. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll ship you out of here. Do they have a solitary here? Oh, yeah. They'll strap you out of the bed. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Jeez. You can't move. Yeah. A little reminder. Yeah. Behave, right? Yeah, it's like, don't. Not that don't, you need it. Don't but. pass food. Don't pass anything that's not yours. Otherwise, you're going to... Do you get a by, like, commissary and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's different here. It's, a, it's like a bubble sheet. Instead of, like, Colorado, it's like a little little touch screen you can do. Uh -huh. But here's, like, a little scantron. You send it off to, like, Missouri. And it's, it's the same company. But it's the... It just takes longer to get here. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just... Like, what kind of stuff can you buy? Uh, like, ramen soup and peanut butter and uh, oatmeal. Like, lemonade mix, stuff like that. I usually just get the, the oatmeal on the wrong screen. Do your parents put money in your books, sir? Yeah, I'm not sure how, like, that restitution stuff's going to work. I'm sure, like, that'll, like, whatever, whoever sent me money on the canteen will probably, like, it'll take a little bit of it, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Chris. All right, thank you. Special. <laughs> it no. is a holiday today, you know that. I know. Well, okay. I think I think they had chocolate milk on Christmas. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah, they got milk with everything here, obviously, you know, the state. So. Yeah. Oh, so a lot of dairy. The dairy state. Yeah. So, so they, got, they got cheese with a lot of stuff, too. So. Yeah. Well, we brought you some non lactose power if you'd like it. Seriously? Yeah. All well, yours. Um, wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, so we don't want to take you, you know, all day, um, and we really do appreciate being able to sit down and talk with us. Um, there's a few things we want to kind of clear up, wrap up, and then if you have any questions for us, um, that'd be fine too. Um, the only 
wonderful kid. Did you want to talk about Ronnie a little bit? Or no? I talked to your dad uh, when we were at lunch. Oh, okay. And uh, a couple of things we talked about, your property and you know, waiting on the DA's office. But then he also, the reason he called was uh, Dave Cullen. Dave Cullen? Okay. Yeah, he's going to go pick up some of your personal items out of the house. Okay. Today, so. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to let you know that. Okay. We didn't tell him anything about what we talked no, about. No, he doesn't oh, know. Okay. <coughs> yeah. He doesn't even know we're here. No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, he just lives like around the corner from me, so I'd right. be good. Yeah. Yeah, so he just, a lot of times anybody, when anybody goes over there, they usually call just so I can give everybody a heads up. That way, you know, I have an issue with neighbors calling and saying, you know, somebody's getting into the house. Okay. So that's how we do that. Okay. Has anybody been like checking on the house to make sure like pipes haven't broken and all that kind of stuff? Water's off. Okay, good. I do know that. Um, I was worried about like, you know, you know, sprinkling all that stuff. I think it's, I usually blow them out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. I figured yeah, the I water, anybody was actually going through it or watching it. Right the water's, water's been off for a while, I do know that. The yeah. power's still on. Actually. Oh, it is? Yeah. So, um, Fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it, but um, we need to get a tiny bit more into the weeds and into the mechanics of um, the time that you showed up at the house when Officer Kumrod was there okay. till the time when uh, we were all done talking. Okay. Um, so that includes at the house, that includes at the oil site um, and everything. Okay. And part of the reason we need to get into that is um, I mentioned before how we're just really want to get into the mindset of what happened. Um, and you can imagine this is really important for us in the future when we're talking to a guy that's in your position to say, you know, this isn't really a monster. This is more like a Chris Watts. And boy, we remember with Chris, had we asked this or had we done this, we really could have been better. Um, and so that's why we want to get into the mechanics of it a little bit more with you. Um, and that's going to mean exactly how, exactly when, where were you, what was, you know, Shannon wearing, or, or all of that, right? Um, so we really just need for you to take a deep breath and get into it with us. And would it be all right if we ask you some specific questions? Okay. Um, so one of the first things we want to talk about was when you came home, so this is after they had passed, and you came home and met with Officer Coonrod, um, one of the first things we see on the video is you walking into the garage and into the uh, Shanann's car. You remember what that was about? In your car? Yeah, like I think you opened the door or something? Yeah, you opened the passenger door, and it looks like you're looking for something, or maybe you pick something up. Do you recall what that was? Not that I'm aware of. Not like, not looking for anything, but maybe just opening the car door to see if, like, see if there's... Because uh, I think Nikki was saying, I think I see the car seat still in there. Yeah. Something like that. And I was, okay. you know, when I opened up the door, I looked in just to, uh, it's like the first like reaction of like whatever, everybody's just waiting, pretty much waiting to get in the house. Right, right. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't like looking for anything as far as specific or anything, but I was just, I don't know, just reaction going in there and saying, I know everybody's there. I don't know what's going to happen when they get sure. in the house. Inside of nervousness, maybe? Yeah, yeah. a lot of it was out of nervousness. Sure. Okay. okay. And then backing up a tiny bit, I jumped forward <coughs> too far. Um, so she comes home at 2 in the morning. Um, she gets into bed. Was when you guys had sex together, was that pretty quickly after she came home? I think it was around like 2 30 because she, I felt like she'd be in bed for, for a little while. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. Um, and forgive me, it's it's not a pervy thing, but she woke you up. Yeah, she was just. I could I could feel like feel like a hand was okay. on me, like rubbing my leg or my chest or something. Okay. Like that. And then that was, you know, signal it's go time type thing. Pretty much, okay. she was like, yeah. Okay, okay I get it. Um, and then that was maybe a half an hour after. Mm -hmm. And then after that, is there any talking, or was it just kind of a? I just like. <laughs> Quiet in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like I just, I just felt, I just felt her hand around me. I'm just like, what? Oh, just time like, to go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. All right. Um, then a couple hours of sleep. Alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess what I don't understand is, so then there was some talking. 
And then, how did you get on top of her? How did that happen? It's like when I got into bed, I just figured cause she was laying. Cause she when she was sleeping, she was laying like face down, which she really never does. Okay. And I was, I just got into bed and I kind of nudged her, and then she like kind of rolled over, and then I was just like, just like right there on top of her. Okay. And so that was after you'd gotten ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you go down, you make your food. Oh yeah, I got like house cheese and another couple of things that I made okay. that food that day. Okay. And then, so this is, we talked a little bit earlier today about, you know, there was all of these things playing in your mind where you just didn't even want to go another second without having this conversation or without some sort of completion, right? Mm-hmm. And then so you come back, she's asleep, and then you just kind of nudge her? Yeah, I just kind of like, hey, okay, look out for a second. And was there a nudge talk for 20 minutes, or was it just a nudge and then all of a sudden you're on top of her? No, it's pretty much on top. Okay, so that happened pretty quickly. Yeah, it was, that's how we kind of pretty much talked. Okay. That was just right there. And was there talking? Yeah. Okay. And so a nudge, a talk, she's laying down and you're standing up? I was on, I was like, I, I crawled back, I got on my side of the bed. Uh-huh. And I just like nudged her like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you're talking while you're on top of her? Mm-hmm. Okay. That seems confusing to me. Is that actually what happened? Okay. Um, and so... But she was fine, like just laying there, like you trying to talk to her while you're on top of her. Maybe I thought we were going to have sex again or something. Oh, okay, um, okay. And how long did you talk? About 15, 20 minutes. Really, in that position? Okay. And was there any sex? No. Okay. Maybe she um, basically from the position that we were in. Maybe she maybe thought maybe I'd try to go again. I don't know. Okay. And and I don't harp on it too much, but I'm just trying to think if my wife's four months pregnant and it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I want to talk, and I want to get on top of her, that's just not going to fly. So that's why I'm confused. So is that really what happened? Yeah. Okay. And then talk for about 15 minutes, and then it's heated, and then your hands are on her neck. Okay. All right. Um, what, did the talk, what, what did the talk consist of? Basically, just <laughs> the, not how, at first it was more of like the, you know, Selling the house type of thing, or not going to Aspen, or trying to maybe go in a, at a different time, and then I just switched all to the. I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore, not compatible. And went to that, and that's when I got to the heated part of it. Did she ever say at some point, get off of me, or anything like that? At the end. Yeah. That's what she said. I don't want you to. But, like, you know, because where I was, it's kind of like she didn't want me like to, you know, sit down or like hurt the baby or anything yeah. like that. Did she accuse you of cheating at that point? Mm-hmm. So what'd she say? She's like, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. I, was, I, I didn't come out to say you know, that there is somebody else, but she obviously already knew. And your response to that was what? She's, she said, no, there's not. <clears throat> you deny it. I believe I just denied it, but I mean, at that point, That I was, because when she would accuse me at the beach, it was a lot of like, that there's nobody else, you know, there's nobody else, you know, for like, you know, and when we got back home, she always like said, there's got to be somebody else, because she'd always talk to her friends, like Christina or somebody on text messaging, and they'd always say, there's got to be somebody else, if he's not wanting to sleep with you, like, he's getting it from somewhere else, and there's, you know, there's nowhere else, I mean, she couldn't really say that I would get anywhere else because I was using those Android gift cards, so it's kind of like, you know, she just me, me getting distant, but she knew, and I just, that's, that's mainly the reason why I talked to her, because I knew, like, after that night, it was just like, it felt like, I just felt guilty, more guilty than ever before. Okay. Um, and then, it seems to me, and, sorry, I had a lot of thoughts here. So we know what happened, and we can talk about it today kind of openly, um, and that's what we need from you is to just kind of say, you know, I know it sounds bad, or I know this, or I know I feel this way, but physically this is exactly what happened. Um, so if you could tell us that, it seems then that it would have had to have been a, a pretty quick transition from two people talking to this, yeah. right? Is that what happened? Yeah, it was like, I don't want to, like, kind of think of the last, last things we were, we were talking about. But it was, you know, like I love, love you anymore. And then she was like, you're never going to see the kiss. Oh, that was it. that's perfect, Chris. That's exactly what we need. Okay. And I know it's hard to walk through that again, but that's exactly what we need. So then, 
as soon as she started talking like that, then it was on. Okay. But it was you saying that you didn't love her? Is that right? Okay. And her saying you're never going to see the kids. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine how that made you feel. I'm sorry. It didn't. It didn't warrant what it did. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that she didn't scratch at you or anything, is that just because it was so powerful? I don't think it. I mean, I didn't feel like I've never done that before, put right. my hands around anybody before, so I don't even know what kind of force I was putting on her neck. Okay. It, like I said, two to four minutes, I don't know if that was two to four minutes. Did you cover her face at all during that time? Both hands on the neck. Okay. And so if it's done right, I mean, that can be a matter of seconds before someone on their carotid loses oxygen to their brains out, right? Did it seem like it was that quick or? Okay. Maybe a minute, maybe two. Okay. Screaming? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, did you see eyes go bloodshot or anything like that? Okay. okay. And you then, kept talking about the mascara. Did you see mascara on your face? Yes, it looked like it was like. Uh, that's what I attributed it to. Is it? Was she crying? Is that why? At what point did she start crying? When I'm, I'm talking about the relationship, about not being compatible. And when she's talking about uh, there's somebody else, that's where she started crying. That's where I thought, you know, it was mascara. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was it. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Was there a pillow or something you wanted to ask about? Yeah, so there was. Was there ever a, at any time a pillow or a sheet or anything involved in like that on, on the face specifically? No? Um, like the sheet I kind of wrapped around the. Get downstairs. Oh, but, uh, the one that was at the site. Okay. And then the other sheets, they were in the trash. At what point did you put those in there? I think that was. Obviously, after I was in the house. Yeah. I think it was probably the next day or so. Okay. I think it like, I don't know. I'm not sure, like. What happened? This is hard to talk about. Like when yeah. sprinkles them out. Of, like sometimes, I guess they use the bathroom. Hmm. So like, I think that's one of the major reasons why. Because I think that had happened. Oh okay. 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 You said she was sleeping face down at one point. Was her face in the pillow, or is it turned to the side, or how did that? Kind of like on the side. She was kind of like a side sleeper, but she was more more down than usual. Okay. But then she turned, rolled completely mm -hmm. under her back mm -hmm. when you start talking to her. Okay. <clears throat> um, now, as hard as that was, I think you need to talk about the girls too, okay? All right, thank you. Um, so with the girls, you talked about how they uh, got into the truck with you and were alive. Okay. Are you 100% sure that's true? Okay. Um, can, we, can we ask, go back just a second? Um, you talked about before that Bella walked in now to the bedroom. Can you tell us about that before you left? Yeah, it was, I was just getting, like, getting the sheet off the bed and she walked in and she had her little pink blanket with her. She was like, what's, what's wrong? Tell my mommy. And where was she at that point? No, just pretty much on the bed, but she was face down. Wrapped in the sheet? What did you say? I just said, no. She didn't feel good. That's why I tried to carry her downstairs. She ran. Okay. Did you carry her like this? Did you drag her? How did you do it? Tempted to, tempted to pick her up and pick her up and take her down, but I lost grip after a little while and just had to pull. Did Bella see you do that? What was Bella saying? She started uh, crying a little bit. She said, what's wrong with mommy? And what'd you say that time? She said, she's, she doesn't feel good. She didn't, she's a smart girl. She didn't, she didn't know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Did she ever touch your hand? Try to wake her up or anything? No. She didn't want to see her or ask to see her or anything? So that initial time that she see you put uh, Shannon in the truck, just 
so she was kind of following you? Okay. So she followed you and you put Shannon in the truck. Okay. And then what? I got... Cece wasn't up yet. She was, she was just in her room. She was getting ready to get out of her bed. And then they were just walking around the house. I was... Put the... Put my lunchbox and stuff in the truck and then grabbed the kids and I put them... And she, right. So Shanann, is she kind of on the floor in the back? And they're just on the bench. Okay. Um, and both alive at that point. Okay. Is there any reason you would feel uncomfortable to tell me that they were not alive at that point? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't it a video or anything? Um, it's hard to see. Okay. And, I, and I believe you. I'm just, um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you all the opportunities to be comfortable enough to tell me exactly. Okay. They were Okay. Trust me, I hear that every every day when the fellow is talking to me on the site. Oh, really? What do you mean? When she said, that, you know, when we were driving to the site, she said, Daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. So that, that goes back to maybe Shanann evacuating herself? I don't know if it was that. I, you know that smell like a, like a skunk maybe sometimes? Oh. So I, I got some, some kind of smell that way, but I don't know what that was from. And was that maybe outside the truck or was that in? I don't know. Oh, okay. What did you guys talk about on the way out? They were pretty quiet. They just, you know, played next to each other. Okay. Maybe Bella in her lap and CC in her lap, just back and forth. Oh, okay. Just trading off like little ones do. Okay. Were they awake? I think well, one would kind of fall asleep, the other one. You should see what they kind of trade off back and forth. Were they talking to you? Just about, you know, just saying, Daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. It was early in the morning, they were showing up there. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to, so did, you didn't have to wake CC up? No, there was the noise from trying to get Shannon downstairs. Did she kind of fall down the stairs? No, it was more of like trying to get her down and like, you know, from the steps, maybe her foot at the next step kind of thing. Oh. Know, they, they're like Okay. Do so then, once you get to the site, tell me what happens. So I get to the that one site and I get Shannon out to that. Pull over to the Right, right off the side, the side there. Okay. And the girls are still in the truck. Okay. Did they ask you what you were doing, taking mommy out, or? Yeah, I, I don't remember what I told them, but they did ask them. Okay. What did they, they say specifically? It was more of like, you know, what are you doing to mommy? Okay. And then is that when you buried her? I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I don't remember if, it, if I dug a, a hole there first, or but I don't. They didn't watch me do that. Okay. So then pulled Shanann out. She's maybe just sitting there on top of the ground. Yeah, like off to the side, off to the side, close to where she ended up. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. All okay. right. And then the girls, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned Bella was first. Cece is first. Okay. Where exactly was she when it happened? In the back seat. Okay. Was she just right next to Bella? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, so once again, was it a hand over her face? Was it? It was a blanket over and my hand. And then your hand. Okay. And then so that just stopped her from breathing type thing. Okay. Did she struggle at all? I don't think so. But my, I was blocking her face, and my hand was right here. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You had one hand here and one hand over her mouth. And we're just pushing her against the back of the seat type thing? Okay. What was Bella doing? She was sitting there next to her. She didn't know what was going on. Okay. Could she see you? Okay. Um, and then, did that take a minute or two? I didn't have no light contact at the time at this okay. point. Okay. Tell me about what you were thinking. Was I was thinking it's what would happen. Yeah. Right, any partial hint of 
what I feel for those girls and what I feel for my wife, but nothing is none of this would have happened. So I don't I wasn't thinking. Okay. So she's in the back seat. Okay. Um, and then once she's gone, then is it Bella next or is did you pull CC out? I pulled CC out. Okay, so once CC's gone, Bella's still there in the car alive, and then you pulled CC out, what did you do with her? Okay. So she went into the tank and Bella was still in the back of the truck alive. Okay. Um, with regard to that tank, did you bring up CC, put her down, open the hatch? Brought her up, open the hatch. Kind of put her in. Okay. When we talked the very first time we met, when we were talking about this, it was a matter of just lowering, lowering her down. Okay. And so she went in feet first. Okay. Was she able to fit pretty well? Was it snug? I think so. Okay. Did you have to like move her around a little bit and get her in there? I think so. Okay. All right. But no, I didn't have to like, you know, hit her like, you know, okay. something like that. It's not like you stomped her in? No. Okay. Um, and then close the hatch? Yes. Okay. And then went down to Bella. Tell me what happened there. She said, what happened to Cece? Or she asked, it was, it was the same thing, the exact same thing that happened to me as CC. Did she ask you that? Okay. So Bella's pretty smart. How did she sound when she asked you that, Chris? She said that, that, that soft voice she always had. Yeah. And what exactly did she say? She said exactly the same thing that happened to me as CC. And then I said, I don't even remember what I said. I don't say if I just said yes like a horrible person or if I just put, the sh put that blanket over her too and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way? Mm-hmm. Okay. She said no, daddy. And that's the last thing she said. Did she say no, daddy, like please no, daddy type thing? Did she say saying don't do it? And she, said she, she said no, daddy. Okay. Same way, hand on neck, hand over mouth, or hand over blanket, which is over mouth. Did that take a couple minutes? I like it. Okay. Then, then what? I just know she had a couple spots, like over her eye or something, and I picked her up. And same thing. Okay. Um, and we talked a little bit earlier today about it. You don't remember why a different tank? Okay. And there was no reason. I mean, they're both the same tanks. I mean, they're just like I don't, I don't know why I did two different things. Okay. There's one. I, I never got up there. Does one catwalk lead to both? Oil can go on either tank. Okay. But if you go up one set of ladders, does that eventually yeah, yeah. get you both? It's one catwalk. Okay. Now Bella was a little bit bigger. Was she harder to get in? It, it felt like a little bit. Okay. And so was it a matter of just kind of maneuvering her? All right. Um, so then, they're both in there. Um, is there any reason to think they were alive when they fell in? Okay, be pretty sure. Okay. So once that's done, then what? We'll go over to Shenan. Clear away some weeds and pick a hole. Okay. Did you have a shovel? Yeah, we have a shovel, a rake, and a weed, weed whacker. Part of our tools for cargo. With that rake, if I remember right, it, it was, was part of it just sitting there because it was broken. Oh, did it break as you were digging or something? No, when I was rake, when I was like smoothing the ground over. It, on this day, it broke when you were doing that? Okay. Was that after you were all done? And it seemed as though maybe the first people that got there saw it was, was it stuck in the ground? I guess it was like, not like standing up, but it was like laying down. Oh, okay. Were you planning on coming back? I mean, I don't know. If, I don't think so. Okay. At this point, then, this is just before then, in a couple of hours, you would make it back home to see Officer Conrad. Okay. And so once she's buried, then... That's when people start showing up. I believe. 
did you notice was she cut or broken or bleeding in any way? No, I mean, I know, like, the bloodshot eyes you were talking about, I noticed that at that point. Yeah. Other than that, no. Um, had she partially given birth? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. remember she, she had a shirt and think blue underwear on. Okay. That's it. And so at that point, she was up there. Thank you. I know that wasn't it. Can you, can you tell us about... <clears throat> Obviously, you know when the district attorney got up and talked about Bella's injuries and stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't want to hear about that. Right. Can you tell us about that? As far as, like, her biting her tongue? And ripping her frenulum, which is that connective skin from your lip to your gum. It was gone. Her gums had, like, a, it looked like a hole in them. Um, and the pathologist said it was from her obviously struggling to get away. I didn't know what that, I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Could it be that that's what happened? So, like, I didn't put my hand, like, over, that, over her, like, like that. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it would have been just downward pressure on her. This area. I didn't. I didn't see any of that when I came back up. Like it was. It was it like her lip was like missing or something? No. Um, see this skin that uh -huh. connects there. Yeah. That was ripped. Like it was gone. So it kind of made I'm, like I a mean, hole maybe, in her gum. I'm, I'm just thinking maybe it's like it's, it's maybe like if her mouth hand was not her head was like twisting back and forth. Would that have done that? Yeah. I had a blanket. I don't know. Like, did you feel her doing that thrashing or you're trying to get away? I or? felt her head moving back and forth. You did? But I don't know. I, I didn't know that it happened. Could you tell if she was trying to yell or say anything? The only thing I know was the daddy no and then like the some kick around here and there. Trying to like kind of breathe. Mm -hmm. During that time, do you remember getting phone calls from Nicole Atkinson? Mm -hmm. After, uh, I think, before she got to my house or after? Just any time during that morning. I think I didn't get one until I saw her on my doorbell camera. And that was, what, 10 o'clock? Yeah, I was right around there. Okay. And so at that time, had everything been done out of 3319? Yeah, it was at a different site. It was at a pumping unit. Okay. So you went from there when it was all done. So the girls are in the oil, uh, shenanigans in the ground, and maybe a little bit of cleanup. Um, was there any questions we had about the sheets or any garbage cans or, or garbage sacks? No, I think okay. answered those already. All right. So then you went from that site to another site to work. And yeah, because we had there was a, at that survey three nineteen there was a little spill. So that's it. That's where most everybody showed up there because that's still that was there. We tried to figure out what happened. Oh, while well, you're on that subject, we back up the, the night before. You had some text messaging about going out there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was I think Friday that we had figured out there was a spill out there from like his old site and set up a little different. So what had happened was there was a downcomer, and then there's a sidecomer going into those oil tanks, and one of the downcomers is tied into a back pressure line that split, and every time it was dumping oil, it was split on the ground, and it was the oil was coming up okay. out of the ground. And we decided just to go out there on Monday because it was Friday, and he had like switched it out. Either he shut it in or switched switch lines or he covered it up and see if it was going to come back or not. Okay. And then it's more specifically, you talked or you text about how you would go out there and take yeah, care of it? Yeah, I would go take care of it for him because okay. I've gone out there plenty of times. Okay. Like, so I, I used, when another guy was out there, as far as another foreman, he showed me around out there like a year or so ago, and I just got familiar with the place and I got to swell them out. Okay. And so that was a genuine, yeah, that, was, that wasn't yeah. a pre alibi. No. That was but a, there was a lot of people that said no. that you wouldn't normally do that. I'm, you normally help somebody? No, like a, a field, to your position, not you specifically, but your position doesn't do that kind of stuff. Well, that's the thing, like when I was a rover and to a field coordinator, I still try to do everything I used to do. 
Okay. So I'm still like, I wasn't good at delegating stuff. I just used to just doing stuff on my own or just like taking care of it for somebody else. Right. I, I wasn't good at the whole like, hey, you could do this, you could do that, yeah. or I sit over here. And, and well, you see what it looks like to us, I know, you I know, know. It's like when it came up, we're like making plans to be out there, you know, that day. But that's not what it was. That I was, was real. No. Okay. I was just not going to help him. So how long were you there? What time do you think you were done with the girls? Hard to really tell. I mean, I think everybody started showing up there probably around 7.45, 8 o'clock. Okay. So. And then you were there, or did you see went to a different site? Yeah, it's like the thing was either the 1029 or the 629 or something like that. And so how long were you at that site? The rest of the day until I got called away. So then that was, you were there for at least a couple hours until you heard Nicole Atkins came on the doorbell. Yeah. And then I think there was even more time after that until you started coming home. Yep. And you got home at 2, two something? No, it was closer to 1.30. Okay. Around there. So somewhere around, you know, 9 o'clock-ish. All the way till 12:30 or 12 or mm -hmm. one or something, and then and they came home. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a lot to do about coming home and listening to that Metallica song. Have you heard about that? I've heard, about, I've, heard, I've heard of Metallica song that people have been some of the same lyrics to it called Battery. Do you remember doing that? That was uh, Nikki Passenger. She liked the song, or she just wanted to know what it meant. Oh. So I was just, that's why, that's why I, you looked it up? Mm -hmm. I just kind of looked at the, I didn't have the CD with me, so I didn't, okay. you know, I and just kind of looked at the words. And was that on the way home? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was just a different time? That was a different time. Okay, and, and so the media it's probably got a hold of that. It's because it's a battery. Right, okay. But it's like, you know, it's it's a more about like a, like a family coinciding as a battery. Okay. You know, not like, you know, hitting somebody. Sure. Yeah. Why did Nikki want to know what it meant? I don't know. It was it was kind of strange. I mean, she she's very into different types of music, and I mean, music I never really thought I'd ever listen to. And like, she got me into a few things there as far as music was, but like, battery was just something that she asked me because I knew I knew Metallica pretty well. She just wanted to know, like, hey, what's this? What's this? The lyrics mean? And I just yeah, I just looked it up just to look at all the words together and just put it in put it in my head again and all the. Just made something out of nothing. That's why it's strange. I got those lyrics in a in in letter. Oh, so now does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some specific lyrics to it. Yeah. Like that guy from California. Oh, oh was the, the kid? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. senior? Okay. Um, with regards to then when you get home, the, you and the officers, you know, saw what they saw. You mentioned that you took the ring off your finger, um, and then the book. You, did you throw that in the trash? Okay. Um, there was another book, Body of Evidence. Does that sound familiar? That you had in your cell. A body of that um, Patricia Cornwell. Maybe. Does that sound right? Probably. Yeah. Did it in Lowell County. Mm -hmm. What was that about? That was just one that gave me. Who gave it to you? The. Uh, Deputies. Not or, your or, dreams, or? Oh, no, they got 50 books. Oh. No, any book that I had was given to me by the book cart that they had. So you didn't ask for that book? Or? No, they just kind of give me, like, hey, I read some Brad Thor books. Um, he's like a military guy. And Patricia Cornwell, my grandma had always read her books and thought it was, I mean, she was always, she loved those books. And I'm not sure if that was probably the, one of the first books. Not the first book I read there, but probably the second book I read there. But it was like they had to give me, here's four books, choose. What other book did you read? Do you remember? The first book they gave me when I was in Suicide Watch was, I don't know why, but it's Murder at Something. And I was like, I looked at him and like, that's, that's the one we got. I'm like, okay. But, huh. They handed you that, that mm -hmm. book by itself, no other choices? No, the next book I got, another guy that was, I guess they're overcrowded there, a guy was sleeping on a cot under, outside my door, he was like, here, try this one, it was, one that was based like in the 1800s, it's more of like a, like a situational book, like a time period book, so that was a little more 
Yeah. Calm. That one. That was the first book they gave. You don't remember what it was called? Murder at something? We were at the Truman Center. Truman Center? Yeah, I think it was. Um, I remember at the Truman Center. Truman Center. Um, I think it was written by Margaret Truman. Did you read it? Mm-hmm. Was it good? It was decent. I, I never, I've never read a book in a long time, so it was. It was different, but like like some of the books they gave you, like when you're in the old, I mean, you're not allowed to have books in there outside the Bible, but the the, uh, the counselor is there, let me have a couple of books, and they just like, I you know, here's the ones you choose from, this one's ahead. I don't like mystery books or something like that, that's the ones. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy they're giving them like murder books, murder mystery books. You hope that it wasn't some sort of yeah. insult or, you know. Um, okay. <clears throat> what do you think of yourself now? I don't, I don't. Back, back when all this happened, when I was in Will County and everything, I just I didn't I definitely didn't feel like myself anymore. Like it, when my attorneys would talk to me and like you know, talk to some of my friends and like some of the stuff they would say, like I do say good things, but I'm just thinking to myself, how could even anybody even say those things about me now being what happened. It's like people that I knew and that I never talked to again. That I, like maybe I was like the roommate like back in the day or like went to school with or something like that. They just, now they're just gonna say that's you know, it's like Chris Watts, that's you know guy with the high school that's the guy like, you know, get all this horrible stuff to his family. And now it's like I know I shouldn't really, you know, take to heart what other people think about me so much. It's just a matter of like what God thinks about me, what I what like what he thinks, what his opinion is. Not not anybody else's. I mean, everybody's gonna have their opinion about everybody. Like before I got in trouble, I mean, I was always the guy, hey look, or judge somebody on T V. You know, like like that guy that's no orange junction. That guy that's, you know, that killed that guy, that guy that break back up somebody. You know, like, oh, you know, that guy's horrible. Now I'm the and it's like now, like, when we come out at, like, six, 6 o'clock at night and there's something on the news, like, I try not to even pay attention to it. It's like, I don't want to be in that position where I'm judging somebody else because that's, you know, what people were doing to me. I don't want to be that person anymore, but I just hope that I can, you know, step back and kind of look at everything that I've done in my life and then, like, up to that point, and just, like, I did some good things, but no matter of the most important thing, I screwed up the worst. I just hope I can at least maybe help somebody and uh, however much time I have left. Was was it your intent the whole time you were taking the girls out there that they were you were gonna do that to them? Honestly? It's like when I got this when I got there I didn't I didn't think it was gonna like you talk about the tanks or just Yeah, like well just I mean I, I just I, thought process and all this, none of this makes sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking these questions because it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I guess, I mean, like, did you, you could have done it before you guys left. I don't And not had him, you know, alive in the back seat. They could have been with Shanann in the back seat. I didn't think about anything really, like, as far as, like, how everything was going to happen. I don't know, like, why it happened. Why I left everything out there in the field and why, like, all this stuff, like, just none of this makes sense at all. But to Tammy's point, did you think that they might be coming back or did you know they wouldn't be coming back? I don't know. I mean, the whole trip out there, I mean, it was like I was on, like, I wasn't thinking. It was like, In my mind right now, I'm thinking back. I'm like, I'm hoping that I wasn't like that. I wasn't coherent enough to make that decision to where I knew I was going to kill my girls. I was, I'm just hoping that you know, like, like no, no father would want ever want to do anything to hurt his, his blood and flesh. But I did that, and I just don't understand how it happened. So I mean, I even read books that say you know, like, no, no guy would ever do anything to hurt his children. Like, this happened. 
So I always think of myself like did I was I even a dad at one point? I don't know. But I just it's just gonna take a long, long time to guilt and everything to get this through. Have you asked for forgiveness from God? Mm -hmm. It just takes a long time for me to forgive myself. And that's one thing. Yeah. I just hope that they can one day forgive me too. And I think I think you said earlier that you were so angry at Shanann or whatever that you were gonna, you know, anyone in your path of destruction or whatever was gonna get it. Basically, kind of is what kind of made it sound like. I'm not saying that exactly right, but why were you so angry at Shanann? I don't know if it was just because of separating me and my family, pretty much. Because I mean, it happened at the wedding. Like that's the reason they didn't come to the wedding. I, mean, I blew up at my family to a point where I, I said some horrible things to them back, you know, back in 2012 that I'll, you know, I pretty much told my family that, you know, I don't need them anymore because I have, <laughs> I, I said, you know, I cussed my mom out. I did all this kind of stuff. I never thought, you know, and I don't know if it was just like she man coached me on to do it or if it was just like rage that was like I'd never seen before. And then I don't know if it was just everything that happened in July, but they can't see my kids, and I'm not sure if they would, if they're ever going to go see them again. I don't know. And it was just like, I don't know if that had something to do with it, that something inside of me just triggered it, and it just like all that pent up from the wedding and everything, just like, it's like a, a long fuse that finally just went to its end. What happened in 2012? There was a, my mom and this man just like, like from when I proposed to her, it was at the beach and from then on it was just like, like she always went up to this man and was like, I, I didn't need a ring like that when I was your age, I, don't, I didn't need all these fancy things when I was your age and just kind of kept boiling over and boiling over and then we just kept, they never agreed on anything, it was just like, you know, they I mean, we didn't really need their help to do anything. We're just like, so we'll just pay for it ourselves and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was just back and forth. And I think she, maybe my mom just never thought she was good enough. She always thought she was hiding something from me. So, she always thought Shanann was hiding something? Like what? I don't know, stuff from her past or like, you know. I oh, I see. Yeah. So there's conflict at a barbecue and all the families got together. And the first maybe a barbecue that Shannon put together for everybody to get to meet each other. Two families we call that. Like when you first started dating. Oh. I remember we did have something like that, but I didn't oh remember like a any kind of arguments at any place like that. I know like when I proposed to her Shanae had her family come down to the beach too. They sat, sat up, stayed at a separate, a separate house. But as far as like a barbecue or anything, I don't remember one that was like that. Way before then. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember the I remember the time when I asked Frank to it was okay if I had asked Shanae to marry her. I remember that we we'll get together. I don't think. So then, what was the book at the wedding about? It was just my mom. And pretty much my sister just, I just don't like her. Oh. They just, uh, it was, they just thought, you know, that I, that they, that Shannon had taken me away from them and moved me out to Colorado. Oh. Because we, we were in Colorado and we flew back to get married. Oh, okay. Because I, we had, we went to Colorado for Thanksgiving to visit some friends. And we decided to move out there like a couple months later. So in like, so that was like April. I moved out there April 2012. We got married in November 2012 in North Carolina. So they always thought I was just taking, and she took me away out there. 
And then there's something with invitations or something. Your sister is supposed to send invitations. Yeah, there was. Okay, now you're bringing some memories back. Um, there's something to do with that, and then my sister wanted, you know, her kids. Oh, my sister wanted her kids with, like the ring bearer and like something else, ring bearer and flower girl. And then she then like, you know, she told her no. Or wait. Either Shannon told her no, or Jamie backed out of because of something else, and then it just like all blew up. And is that pretty close to the wedding? Yes. Yeah, I dealt with them in a couple of weeks. Did oh, they wow. go to the wedding? Your family? Uh, my grandma did. But your parents and your sister did not go. Ronnie wasn't there either. No. Nobody was there. It was uh, my grandma was there, and then like the the dance when I when like you know the. The groom dances with his mom, like up. It was I would dance with Mark's mom and my grandmother. It's sad, isn't it? I mean, it all comes from a place of love, you know, them yeah, loving you and yeah. not wanting to get stolen. And it was a, it was a great day. I mean, everybody was really happy. I mean, it's it's always just running in the back of my head. They were never there, and every time they look at pictures, it's just like, oh, where's uh, out there? never knew if they actually were going to come anyways, but as far as like, you know, sometimes they'll just like, all right, we're just going to go just to, just to be there, but they never knew if that was the case. And so then when Tanya was asking, why were you so mad at Shanae, um, it was part of it, just this whole family strife. That's, I, that's the only thing I can think of right now, because I mean, there's no other reason really to be mad at her, since she, we took care of each other, our, whole lap boy years. You know, it was just like a good relationship. I mean, it's just like, if I never met Nikki, would I ever have, you know, thought our relationship was bad? I would not. I, I, you know, that's one thing I always thought about, like, even Nikki asked me, like, if, you know, I don't want you, to, she said, I don't want you to leave your wife if, just because of me. I'm just like, like, what do you mean? She said, well, just, if, if, you know, if you met me, like, would you have known? Like, I never thought I would have strayed away from her at all. Like, I, I've never followed, like, tried to follow anybody, you know? Right. Did she, was she man checking your phone or? She always had my phone. She always checking your phone? So how did you get past that? I used my work phone. To text? And you had some secret apps, right? That was on my personal phone. Um, Were you using anything else to contact, have contact with her? No, I just texted her with my work phone. I just and like uh, when she and the kids went to North Carolina, she used my personal phone, and she just told me like to put pictures in a an app, and I just found that calculator. I just put you know just searched on the the app store like hidden pictures, and that's the calculator app that popped up. Like in your, your iCloud or your whatever isn't linked together, so she would know if you're getting at, you know, downloading apps and stuff like that. They used to be a long time ago, but when we got different uh, different phones, or uh, when our phone, like a phone contact list, we synced up from the cloud and stuff, I, I just I couldn't have, like, she had, like, tons and tons and tons of, like, phone contacts. I just couldn't have all that, but it's still kind of linked up at one point. But as far as like she asked me to get my, my own iCloud account, just to kind of do that up a little bit. How about your Facebook account? You deleted that at some point? When did you do that? And why? I think it was, so I got back August 7th. Went to work. I think it was probably August 8th. That's when um, I think he was, told me she told her friends about me. And I just they you know they probably looked me up on Facebook and see that she comes pregnant. If, if Nikki already found it, you probably already by the reason why I did that. Did you and Nikki ever fight? We never fought, but like I said, I had to like calm her down a bunch of times. Yeah, you you started to mention that when we were talking to you before about her getting upset about some video or something about being bipolar or well, what she, are you talking about? I think either my, my dad told me about that or John Walsh told me about like she 
she made a couple of videos like when she was just like you know talking to herself, saying that she was bipolar or something like that. But a lot of things was like when she realized that okay, like she's the other person in the relationship that you know I'd always put my wife first over her, and that's what kind of made her take a step, take a step back a few times, and then like I had to kind of like calm her down. Tell me about those times. What that look like? So the first one was probably around July 4th when I had to leave her house. So she, she wanted to kind of spend most of the day together before she went to like a baseball game or something. And like when I had to leave, it kind of just, just, said, just made her like kind of take a step back and wonder what she was doing. And I just, you know, told her and like, hey, you know, just because of what's going like, just because I had to leave doesn't mean like, you know, you have to just take a step. I was, I was like comforting her at some point. I don't even know why I was doing it. Maybe I, I knew I was too far gone at, at that point, but it was... Because this is Shanann's piss. She's called you ten times. You were sleeping because yeah. you had your day off. Yeah. And then you go outside to talk to her on the phone and tell um, Nikki that you need to go home just in case she calls back and yeah. all that, right? Mm -hmm. So what did she say to you, Nikki? She was in the shower. She said, okay. And then that's like, when I, when I talked about that, I, I could calm her down. It's was on the phone. And was she like, we're breaking up, like, we're not going to, I no, can't no, do this? She, no, or? she said, like, she didn't want to, like, she didn't think it was safe or it was good for us to see each other anymore that day, like, the rest of that day, just because of all that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she asked me to come over, like, later on after she got back from her baseball game. And so you did that? Mm -hmm. So what was the second one like? It was basically about the same thing. She was, you know, I didn't really know it at one point, but I guess she had, uh, set up a couple dates with like some eHarmony app or something and they never showed up and uh, she'd already made plans with me and you know wait what do you mean she set up dates when she had plans with you yeah why would she do that I guess she kind of figured out they weren't going to show up she went I guess one one I guess when she went to the baseball game they never showed up and there was another one and never showed up either so, so she's actively dating other people while I never I didn't know it until like a couple weeks later how did you find out What'd she say? She, um, it was some, it was one conversation where I actually kind of fell asleep on the couch, and then, like, she had told me, like, I'm not, much, not sure why she even told me about it, but it was, it was very random, and she could tell that it kind of, like, took me back a little bit, because I figured she would have told me that if she was actively still, like, looking around. I mean, she didn't have to tell me, but I figured she would You think she been. told you, though, so that it would hurry you up and... Make a decision. You are making a decision? It, it might have been, but you know, it's. She never had anybody that's actually tried to like fix things as far as like, you know, hey, like, I like where we're, where we're at as far as like the relationship goes. And actually, like, I did stuff for her around the house, around her little apartment. And like, nobody's ever done that. And she just she thought it was different. So. What about our male friend? Where does he stand with her? What's his name? Jim. Jim. Thank you. Um, he worked in the oil field, uh, North Dakota, I believe. And I mean, he has been a friend of hers for a long time. And it's kind of like a shoulder to cry on. There's always somebody that's always been around for her. And I guess he had like, he's had a couple girlfriends. And just, I guess he's not, hadn't had much luck, I guess, in that department as far as like keeping girlfriends and and then Nikki have been good friends. She's platonic friends? That's, as as far as you know. as much as I knew. Yeah. Okay. But I think uh, they just, they just been friends for a long time, especially up in oil, oil field, North Dakota, mm -hmm. or whatever he's working on, I think. Either Wyoming, they can go all over the place. When um, Sandy and Frank lived in the house for 15 months, mm -hmm. what was that like? It was, you know, it was tough. Do you want me to wait? Or? No. Okay. Okay. Um, it was tough. You know, because, I mean, you go from just me and Shannon and Bella and CC to, you know, two other people and then not for the dogs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Onyx is a, he's a terror. 100 pounds with this heat seeking missile everywhere. And, like, it was, I mean, it was cool having more people around. But, like, it, it was stressful. Yeah. Like, I mean, because with Shanann, like, having two dominant personalities in the house and with her mom there, it was kind of like, 
what her mom would tell her kind of how to raise the kids sometimes, or like, you know, do this, do that, you know, like whenever they were sick, she was like, all right, you know, rub peroxide on your feet, they'll be fine. She's like, what? Like, okay. And, uh, like, I wouldn't do it, and, you know, saying, he was like, just, just do that, because, you know, it's okay. But, like, it's just, like, little things like that, and it, yeah. was, it was, like, a clash every day. Yeah. It's kind of like every time I got home, I didn't know if she now was pissed or if she was okay. Because... When we first got it, when they first got there, they didn't have they didn't have a job yet, and so they're just around all the time. But then, like once they got jobs and stuff, like you know, I think it was a little better for Shanann because you know they weren't around the house all day. But you know, it was definitely stressful, just you know, just vacuuming like every other day. Yeah. And just like I mean, cooking was great. That was awesome. There. <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, I was always like you know. Because they lived, they were down in the basement, so I was, I was always really trying to keep the girls upstairs while they were sleeping. So you know they're running around downstairs, and mm-hmm. I didn't want them to wake up. And I know Frank always told me that trying to wake up Sandy early is not good. So it was just, you know, just kind of like walking on eggshells a lot. Yeah, it was stressful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You think that stressed your marriage with the time, or I mean, it's it was 16 months. It was 15, 16 months. months. Yeah, it was. It was a long time. I mean, it was it was great around the holiday times because they were already there and like you know all that was great. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it definitely. You know, we never really had much alone time. Yeah. Because you always had to kind of plan it out. So. Yeah. What was her purpose for living out there? They just wanted to be closer to the kids. Okay. Because they're you know we FaceTime a lot, but you know it's not the same of like. You know, all right. With two kids, it's hard to fly back and forth. I mean. When they went back to North Carolina this past time, it was the first time Cece's been there. She was three. Yeah. First time her brother had ever met her. So were they, trying to, were they trying to move to Colorado permanently, or did they just... They were thinking about it at that point in time. Okay. But, it, you know, Frank was there. He didn't want to leave. San Diego. She wanted to go back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a matter of, like, they knew their house wasn't being taken care of, and they just... They wanted to go back and make because they had, they had put their house up for sale for a little while, but never, never bought. Mm. Okay. What about your financial stresses? Yeah, the bankruptcy was something I never thought was going to happen. I think that was back in like 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. But I never thought that was going to happen. And I, I never thought a lot of it was from the wedding because they just put all on credit cards. Mm-hmm. And so it was, and then the doctor bills from like you know endoscopies and just like girls were seem like they're sick like every every month it seemed like some type of ear infection which is figured out was just like you know put the tubes in their ears and stuff there was like you no know, different operations here a couple of overnight stays in the hospital for breathing and stuff like that and so it was just it all mounted up I mean I, I never thought it was that far gone but. No. Was any of that from Shannon's neck surgery, or were those bills pretty well paid up? Well, I think the bankruptcy never touched the medical part of it because you have to be like, like, to buy the like the medical part of it, medical bankruptcy, and then there's like regular bankruptcy. Oh, okay. Nothing bankruptcy ever touches like student loans or medical stuff. You have to like be specific with that. Okay. But I think it just took away like a lot of the furniture that we had bought and then a couple other things inside the house to kind of alleviate a lot of the, I, I didn't, I mean it took, I mean every, we had to make the house payment up by phone every month and I had to listen to the bankruptcy skill like every time and it's just like, I didn't know how long it was going to take, but apparently it was, I mean, once you're in bankruptcy it's pretty much you never get out of it, yeah. it seemed it felt like. You guys weren't you guys behind on your mortgage? Even yeah, when I like talked to you? earlier, in, it's like I think December 2017, and then January, February, March 2018. That's when I took the four. We took the 401k out, the loan out to pay for that. How was it that you were spending so much money for it? Just you know, kids and just other bills that we had and. I mean, I knew the car was getting paid for it by the by the bill. But, you know, I never really asked. 
see. Like, I mean, I didn't even have access to the bank account in my phone. Oh. So, like, I, I never really asked to see what it, what it looked like, like, how far. But I just know she'd call, call me and tell me, hey, can you pay the mortgage today? I'm like, yeah, cool. And that was, <coughs> that's, you know, from, the, from my little four-wheeler incident where I sold it without actually paying it off yet. And she thought, like, no, you're never touching the account ever, <laughs> ever. So I'm like, okay, that's cool with me. But yeah, it's... I never saw the account or what it was in there. I just like, hey, there's my, like when I worked at Longmont Ford, I got my check, I just brought it there. Yeah. So. There was a hair care company, I think it's called Monat. Does that ring a bell? Do you know anything about that? Mm-hmm. Like maybe hair, maybe hair dye? I don't know. It's like a, um, do you know if she did like an auto order through that company and had stuff delivered for hair, any kind of hair care product or hair care dye? Not something, I mean, she had like little, I know there's something like little gift packs she had delivered every month, like once every month or once every two months. Had like a different array of different products in it. Don't remember where it's from? Okay. Like you said, Monet? Monat, M O N M O N A T. Yeah. Well, there was an order that was made. Like 251, that's why I asked if it was like an auto order type thing. It might have been an auto order. Yeah, yeah right. it might have been something that I know that Nicole Atkinson, she's into all that stuff. Maybe maybe she didn't got her, maybe she didn't got her something, or maybe it was something she recommended. Okay. How about the HOA thing? What happened there? She was mailing to the wrong address. Uh-huh. They changed their address, and she mailed to the wrong address for a year, and then they. We got a letter in the mail where he didn't like sued over it. We had marriage choice for a year. So we had to pay double for either a whole year or a couple months. After that, so. What happened to all the money that you sent to the wrong address? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They said they wouldn't credit it or anything. I'm not, sure, I'm not even sure what that address was. She said it was just something that she didn't see. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna harp her about it because she had, I mean, she did, she did so much, so I was like, I'm not gonna, like, say, what the heck are you doing? Like, no, it's like, okay. Don't be that cool. I don't know she felt bad enough. So, Chris, what do you think we could have done better? What, what could have made you tell us the truth that night? What did you need to hear from us that you didn't? I'm not sure what really goes to people's minds when they're in an interrogation room. During my, for when I was in there with you and Graham, I was, I mean, I was, you know, just nervous. I was, I mean, I knew I had done something wrong. And I knew you probably already knew or were going to find out. And it's just like, you know, I've watched enough. You know, hate like TV shows to kind of see like, okay, what's going to happen next type thing. Never knew if that's right, but I think it's just the the horror of like knowing what you did and trying to tell somebody else what you did. That's what kept me from doing it because I I didn't even want to admit to myself that I had done anything. So I knew I knew what I had done. I knew how bad and horrific it was. I knew how bad I was going to hurt other people. I didn't. I just couldn't even admit to myself that I had done it. So I, like, I couldn't even tell my parents I did it until like two weeks later. So were you trying to save us from the no, horror of no, it? No, it was just a matter think? of I couldn't admit to myself. How could I admit it to you? So do you think any amount of us asking you things different ways would have helped? Or do you think anything would have helped? I think if maybe you didn't ask Bella if she had hurt the kids, you would ask the other if, you know, if something in that, a different order of question, maybe it would have came out a different way. Because that's the only reason I went with that story is because that was... Well, you weren't giving us anything I know, else. I know. <laughs> that was the problem. But so if you think if we would have said what, do you think? You would have said... You know, 
I think you'd have probably had the if, if the video didn't show them in the truck. You probably had to have lied and just said we, we saw the kids in the truck. I mean, I hate to say you'd have, you'd have to have you know lied to get me to say what you wanted me to say, but it might have been that. That we saw the kids in the truck. When we were talking, there was a point where you just said, can I talk to my dad? I just want to tell him first. I just wanted to, you know, tell him that, you know, that I loved him and that it's probably the last time you're going to see me again. As far as, you know, outside of a, outside of a cell. Yeah. You're looking forward to coming. Yeah, because I'm mean, just talking on the phone, you know, it's just totally different when you see him, yeah. see a face, you know. It's like when we got on that little video conference in Love County, it was like, it was all I could do to stop, just not to like just break down on that phone. So, yeah. so it would be, it'd be good to see them. What do you get to do when they're here? Just like this. Like in a room like this? With the if there's a visiting room, visiting center, like down in my unit, and I don't know what it looks like, but I know they say it's like tables and Pretty much, they they set up a time and get a couple hours. Yeah, just yeah, you know, just in that little center in there. I'm not sure what else is in there, but I just know there's tables. I think it's like vending machines and stuff like that. But it would be good to see them. And unfortunately, they can't bring their phones in or anything. So I was hoping they could maybe show me a video or two, but I don't have for a picture. But they pretty much only let you come in with your ID. It. Can Amelia's still photo or anything like that? Yep, they yeah. can do the still photo. This is sometimes they try to play a video over the phone for me. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's really like fuzzy and crackle a lot. So it looks weird. Do you have any other questions for us? Or do you ever wonder, I wonder why they did this, or I wonder why the investigation went this way? Or... I mean, I mean, I can. I think the first time I, I was brought in, I think it was like the 14th, I believe, when I met you that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, you told me there was a bunch of other people coming in for statements. Was that true? Yeah. yeah. There was a couple people. Okay. Yeah. There were a lot. There were a lot, actually, okay. yeah. Okay. So we had mean, a whole board worth of people listed okay. in HSL. Okay. They didn't get the attention you got that <laughs> night. But. I just, I just wish none of this had ever happened, honestly. It's just like you guys could have never had to come to them. You guys never had to meet me or anything like that. None of it ever felt real. Especially like when I, when they put me in that, that suicide watch cell and last thing that one of those guys said was like, good luck. And just slammed the door and I just kind of knew from then on that was, that was it. And deputy said that? Uh, one of the guys, in, uh, one of like, they call them the SOG guys, Special Operations Group in the Will County, though. Yeah. So was it. Next morning, like, when I got out to take a shower, I saw the newspaper, and there was this big piece cut out of it. I don't know what that was about, and I just kind of saw, like, my last name around that go. Getting this. We came back to talk to you someday. Would you be inclined to talk to us again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they just took me off guard. I had no idea. Yeah. We didn't really want to tell you we were coming just oh. because we didn't want you to have anxiety about us coming. I would have had anxiety. Yeah. yeah was, so we figured the blitz attack was probably <laughs> the best course today. Like the first time we met. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you knew when you were meeting me. <laughs> I, I just did. Yeah. You just don't have all your props here today. That's right. That's our props, man. That was <laughs> sophisticated equipment. It is. Right? That's right. Sophisticated instrument. I don't know that that's going to happen. We might not ever see each other again. Uh, but I didn't think we would, honestly. Yeah. Your experience is definitely interesting. Um, you yourself are definitely interesting. Uh, we, we see things in you that we didn't expect to, and we don't see things in you that we expected to see. So it's very interesting to us, and it's, um, I hope you can take to heart that today was a lot about us learning how to do better. 
how to talk to people better, how to do investigations better. I mean, like, I had never talked to a police officer before, or like, FBI, CBI, anything like that. So that was, that was all new to me. Like, like I said, everything that I've ever seen as far as, you know, the authorities have been on TV. So I, I didn't know, like, what to expect, especially when I got that interrogation room. I just felt like exactly what it, it looked like. Just like, you know, you guys cook and fried and then leave. Come back in, it's like, give me time to stew, give me time to, like, you know, think. And it's like, it works. It just really, like, I don't know, just drills more questions into your own mind instead of, like, you know, just staying in the room and just asking questions all the time. Mm -hmm. You liked it when we took breaks? Like, you think that worked on you? I did. So you were, like, watching videos with girls at one point. Do you remember that? Them giggling and laughing and... Like, when I was in the interrogation room? Yeah. I remember that. You don't? I didn't, I didn't, I thought you, had, you, always had my, you already had my phone at that point. No, so. we didn't take your phone towards the end, towards the end. Okay. That was weird for me. It's, it's like when you put that picture in front of me. Yeah. And that's why it made me do it. it, was, it was, I didn't have the signal in there, but that's like the videos I had on my phone. Which is like, I wish I had taken those videos out more often before all that had happened. That definitely, definitely got in my head a lot. I don't know where that picture was from because I've never seen that picture. The one we showed you? Mm -hmm. Really? I've never seen CC in that dress before. Really? We talk all about a lot about that dress. Yeah. Is that just and you were saying making it up. I've never saw her in that dress. You were even telling us when she last wore the dress the and boots the boots. And the not that dress. Those are her favorite winter boots, and she wears oh, them the all boots. summer. Winter boots, yeah, but that white dress is a little different. I've never oh. seen that picture. No, because you talked about buttoning it up. You said, I remember, because I just, she just wore it the other day, and I had to button up the back. And it must have been a different dress, but not that one. Huh. Is that that picture, was that in North Carolina, or was that? I, I don't know where the picture Pulled it off from. of Facebook, Shannon's Facebook. So maybe it was while you weren't there or something? Might have been, yeah. You don't recall that, huh? So there's a lot of pictures I guess I had to see when they were in North Carolina that my parents had. Like especially like 4th of July and stuff and they had like 4th of July dresses on and stuff like that I never saw. Oh. Some I had on my phone, but you know, that, that white dress I never, felt like they were, like she was going to church or something. I just never saw that white dress. And Bella's little dress that she had. Her little, her little awkward smile there in the back. Yeah, that, that definitely got in my head when I did that. When we had the picture out there for you? See, the, to us it didn't feel like that because we know, really didn't elicit any, any emotion. I don't, yeah. I don't show emotion that much. It's like my dad. It's like I, we don't show emotion. Like, were you fighting it down or were you just not a guy to show it? Like most of the time, I'm not a guy to show it. Like I, I hold it in as much as I can, and like you know, in my cell, I you know, I cry a lot, you know, obviously. But like I'm not really a guy to show it. Okay. I don't like, I don't know, I just I try to hold it as much as I can. I don't know if it's a, you were a difficult guy to read, um, especially at the house that day. That makes total sense now. I, I knew it was like, I guess I was like in shock or just like disbelief or just like some people said I looked like I was a heartless, no soul person, soulless person mm -hmm. when they did like the TV interviews or something. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just glad I never saw it. I don't even want to know what I look like, what I sounded like. But you were obviously feeling it then, you just weren't. Yeah, just like no, nothing registered at all. Everything was like just harbored deep down, and then like I think it was just one night when I was in my cell, it just all hit me all at one point. Not the fact that I was in jail, but the fact that like everybody was gone. Yeah. And none, none of it. I think if it was like, in, you know, like if something happens to your family, and like in like an accident, like a car accident, or like something like horrible like that, it registers at one point. But if like if you did it, I don't know if like it just doesn't register at one point. It's, it's like in my head, it never registered. 
Does it seem real now? Oh, it's, it felt, it feels real. Like every it does. day. I guess these pictures, I just know, like, you know, where they were at when they were doing that. You know, where, you know, when I first had, like, a, some type of hearing over the phone, and I heard, like, uh, Frank and Sandy and Frankie and them, they were on the phone. And I forgot what kind of hearing it was. Something about, like, a probate hearing or something. I knew exactly where they were in the back. I heard the birds chirp. I knew they were on the back deck. And I just, like, walked back to myself and just bawled my eyes out because I knew exactly where they were. I knew how many times the girls were, were back there. And it's, it's just weird how emotion is processed differently for me than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like something, like you said, like, you said, like, um, if you lost your kids in the grocery store for five seconds, you'd be a a mess mm -hmm. and then like you know for me it'd be like you know I'd be, I'd be panicked but I probably wouldn't cry I'd be like like looking around trying to find them but it's just like it just process is different for me I never knew why never know why I don't want to think I'm like a cold hearted person it's just a matter of just, just don't show it show the emotion as much as other people do. Even when, like, you know, the girls left North Carolina, like, you know, her chance brother and mom and dad were all crying when they left. And it's just kind of like, you know, I never really saw my parents get like that when they left. It's kind of like, I don't know if it's like you're born that way. Like your family doesn't show emotion like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, you know, my dad couldn't really speak at the sentencing hearing because he said he was kind of like he was he said he was gonna lose it like like lose his emotion like that really hit me it's kind of like i never seen him like you know like that like like vulnerable mm -hmm. but nobody's really ever seen me that way either that's why like maybe i just was it ever like you're to see if you're like that or was it just something you don't I, just never I did just, no. i never saw my dad cry so maybe it's just something that, you know, was in my brain that maybe I should never cry. Maybe, you know. Was your mom like a loving mom, like a doting mom, mm -hmm. and, you know, would give you affection and hugs yeah. and kisses? And oh, yeah, she'd always, like, ask me, like, you know, what was going on. Like, she said I was always hard to read. She never, she never knew what was going on. But did but, she still try and give you affection, mm -hmm. even growing up? Yeah, she just, she always, my sister is always a parent. It was always like what was going on. She always just like she's always open with me. It was always just you know closed off, and she always wanted to know what was going on, like how I felt. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, it's all here. Even if something, even if something was wrong, like I would have probably never said anything because like I just don't deal with it myself. But I don't know if that just growing up that way just kept me in that way. Deal with things on your own, but then. They, build up so much that you can't deal with them and they take them take a hold of you you never thought in a way you could take hold of you. Do you think as a result of just bottling up for so long? Definitely. What do you remember your dad saying at sentencing? I remember there was a scripture, it was the one John one dash nine. And then like a lot of it the other their representative said for him, and my, my mom said a lot. My mom spoke, but everything my dad had written down, the, the person said. But you know, there's you know, he always he was talking about him going to little league games and races and stuff like that, and going to being my coach and everything like that. So you know, you know, I can experience the same type of joy doing that for my girls. I remember your mom saying. She loves you and she always will. Yep. That was pretty important to hear. I think of that. She said, I forgive you, son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's big, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your dad, when we came here today, we were just hoping and praying that you would take your dad's advice. Do you remember what he said? I hope if you ever get a chance to talk, you can talk about it. Okay. And I think that's what today was. Don't you? Mm -hmm. and yeah, I think one of us didn't expect it to be today. Yeah. So the DA made some comments during that sentencing hearing about your emotions and having no emotions. Or, do you remember all that? Yeah, just like, you know, he lied to us from the start and a couple other things. I believe that's what he was saying. What do you think? Do you 
think he was anywhere close to it? What do you think of, what do you, basically, what is your opinion of what he said in that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be, you know, taking all his evidence and putting in the story that he, that he wanted to convey. And, like, if you don't know me, that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to portray me. Like, if you take everything from August 13th to now, like, that's how people are going to know. That's how people, that's, there's no other way people are going to opinionate themselves about me just by what they see right there. Right. They're going to say, okay, they look at the guy that did that, did the interviews on the 14th, and they see, okay, that, that guy should be, like, you know, on his hands and knees, like, trying his eyes out, and what's he doing? He's just, like, you know, he's just talking. Right. And they're just, like... Now, I know you know, maybe got some information maybe from like her friend saying like he was cheating on her or something like that. He's a cold person. He was, you know, trying to do this and that. It's like, they don't know me. They're, that's always going to be their opinion about me. Mm-hmm. Like, there was one church service, uh, the only one I've been able to gone to in here, and uh, it said you're not defined by one moment in your life. And I think that's like, people are defining me by one, form, one moment in my life. They don't know like what happened before or what can happen later. Right. So I just hope that you know, maybe hopefully one day people can start stop judging everybody. Yeah. I just telling the people in here that you know, I don't even want to know what they did because I don't want to judge them. Mm. Like you know, like I'm not that person. Like you know, they know what I did. I'm not gonna ask them what they did. You know. Makes sense. You did show some emotion during that hearing. What part did you think you felt most emotional? I think I felt when Frank was talking about, you know, when he, well, I didn't know what what to expect when he first started talking, but you know, he, all, he said I was the evil monster, and that 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 rang in me, and he said I tossed him away like garbage, and that hurt. And you know, when Sandy was talking about that video. About a Bella was calling me a hero, and that that kind of triggered it a lot there. And then when Frankie was saying, you know, like I'll never be called uncle again, but you'll never be called a dad again. Mm-hmm. That really stung. But, you know, when my parents got up there, just like just hearing my mom and dad talk, you know, just like they really couldn't look at me. That they really couldn't look at me, but I just felt like, you know. Everything they said, saying they, they forgive me and that, you know, I'm still their son. No matter what. Yep. It was, I know, like, even my attorneys told me, like, you need to show a little more emotion. Because, like I say, the first time I went to the courtroom, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I was still, like, like new to everything, just in shock about what was going on. And they said I was just a cold person, just looking at me. When I was when I did the plea and at the sentencing hearing, it just all all of it felt just more real than anything. I remember growing up, my pastor used to tell me it's better to be one foot out of hell facing heaven than one foot out of heaven facing hell. Mm-hmm. So I think that's you been to hell and now you're facing the right direction. Definitely, I definitely feel like it's, I never knew I, I could have a relationship with God like I do now, but I just, that's like the amazing grace with all of this, but I just wish nobody had to pay any kind of price for this. Mm-hmm. I know there's a purpose for everybody, I just, just hope that I can get my mind. What I think you're seeking peace, right? That's good. That's the only thing you really can do right now is to seek peace and hope, pray that everybody can find it too. For everybody that was involved, like for, for all of you, and just all your team, and everybody, friends, anybody that was involved. Okay. What do you want to happen with this information? I mean, I know you're probably going to tell uh, Frank and Sandy and Frank, you just kind of give them a little closure, right? Yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to tell them. Obviously, you know Sandy better than I. She wants to know everything. Um, but um, I'm going to digest a little bit before I talk to them about it. Um, 
up, so I don't think there's any rush on that. And, um, but other than that, I have no intention of talking to anybody outside of law enforcement. But uh, what would you like to see happen with it? I mean, I mean, I'd like to tell my parents, or, you know, when they get here, instead of like finding out anywhere else. Yep. So now, like they've they've been bombarded with information from like, you know, from the the Amanda girl to the Trent guy to the yeah. from like people going on Inside Edition saying they knew me or went out with me or had like whatever else with me, and it's like. I don't, I don't want them to think that it's like other like false information going out there because like people are getting hold of information like where did they get this information from I do you know, so. would you like to see those people charged you know, people people take advantage of situations and you know they gotta honestly they don't have to look into themselves and just figure out why they did it themselves so I mean I don't think charging them would, would help I think they just need to work out their work out whatever they got going on within themselves. I mean, if... Did you ever have a profile on Tinder or anything like that? Any of those dating websites or anything? No. I just had Facebook. I had Instagram. I don't even know what the WhatsApp thing was called. So I was like, John, you never heard of that? No, I was just like, I don't even know what that is, man. This guy's fishing for something. So, sorry you had to waste your time to go out there and talk to him. It was a big time waster. It was a big waste of time. Yeah. But you would not want to be listed as a victim in that case, as far as him being charged with like false reporting. I mean, it's, he's, whoever's going to try to, Get their five minutes, get them minutes thing, whatever they want to do with this. I mean, that's that's on them. I mean, they're if he's willing to do that, then he just need, he needs to he needs to figure out what's going on with himself before, like you know, I don't I don't think Charlie can something's going to fix that. So it'd just be a waste of time, I think. Anything else before we? Um, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> How things in Colorado now? I mean, since all this is happened, everything's quiet now. Everything's yeah, cool. And well, we had another guy murder his um, fiance, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. So that's neither one of these two. I'm sure you've probably seen that on the news now. So. Everything here is based. I think the only thing here was like that Jamie Cross thing. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, before. yes. We were just talking about that out front. That the girl was kidnapped. Yeah. She yeah. escaped after like 90 yeah. days. Yeah. That's crazy. He'll probably come here. Everybody yeah, they here. said he's in some county jail. Is that right? Yeah, bro. 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 Yeah, so all I see here is like the stuff I try to, it's like everything happened here. So. I guess they didn't either. Watch out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like Do you mind if I take a picture of you just to show what you look like now? You just look so different. Then. Well, I just, you know, like... Uh, it's not going to go on social media okay. or anything. It's just for, like, our own records. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. That's Were you asking him something? No. No, I was just going to say, it's like the, the roads in the background are scary enough, you know. Well, I know. Well, when it's snowing, it's mm -hmm. horrendous. Reminds me of the days of ice racing. Actually. Of ice racing? Yeah, but we had spikes on the tires and that, so. Oh. <laughs> All right, Chris, we're going to let you get back to your door. I'm good. Want to finish the drink? Yes. Okay, they will let me take that back. <laughs> Yeah, I had to shave. They, they recommended I change my appearance at the RDC. So. Why is that? Just so people didn't recognize you? No. Yeah, I, did. I just shaved it all off. That razor, like I said, the razor they have here, it's like a, it's a single blade. 
So like I'm like it's a safety razor, right? Well, it's more than safety. It's like it's more safety than actually a razor. <laughs> That's why he doesn't shave. <laughs> Like a sharp rock, or <laughs> right. just, just imagine shaving the same spot for like five minutes, and then it finally something starts going. Yeah, it starts to like, like, like warm it up or something. I don't know. You'd probably be better just plucking them out with your fingers or something. That'll be warm. You know, everything here is for safety, so like, yeah, I think like once I get moved to GP, I could have something different. So. Oh, that makes sense. Because most of the guys in my unit can't have razors. Well, that makes you feel better, probably. Well, they don't have to watch me. Other guys, they stand out. They stand next to them while they shave. So that would be kind of weird. Oh. So, do they have any other jobs like if, uh, like fleet? Would you be able to go work fleet maintenance or anything like that? Like a class down, like a minimum. Uh, or like a, like a low, like a low medium. They have guys that like run across the street to like a records building Mm -hmm. and work over there. I don't know, like you know. They said it takes a while to get class down from like maximum to medium. Yeah. So it's I'm not sure like if they've been here. I don't know if they'd ever take me to Colorado or you know, you know what they're that would be. Right. I'm not sure if that happens or not. Yeah. It's all pretty secretive and then right up to the minute they do it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You guys gonna do exploring around here? <laughs> so, everything's covered in snow. <laughs> and it's freezing. We were such winds when we walked out. <laughs> Maybe go rent a snowmobile or two. <laughs> yeah, right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball season, but it's not. So. Yeah. Or NASCAR is back in full swing. That's all the last. The last two laps last night when we came out. Oh, did you? No, I went to over like 200 NASCAR races growing up. So yeah. I went to one day 2500. Almost, it was one that Mark Martin almost won. I was hoping he would, but he got passed by Kevin Harley coming out of turn four. I was just like, yeah. 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 It was a wreck fest, I heard. So. Yeah, it's all right. I didn't get to watch it here. But. You went to NASCAR school, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that was fun. It was, it was a blast. Yeah. It was like my childhood, just reliving all over again, right? Just seeing race cars on dynos and doing fabrication welding and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Not sure if that school's still over there anymore or not, but I'm guessing it still is. So do you have to be escorted back? Is that what they do? Yes. Okay. Yeah, like you know that man, we all have to have escorts because it's a special man again. Like, you know, so guard escorts you everywhere. Yeah. So what uh, about when you're all playing basketball together? Are the guards watching you? There's three of them in there. You ever get in fights playing basketball? No, we're just, you know, I mean, we're, you know, guarding each other, like blocking everything that happened. Everybody's we're cool with each other. Good. There's a right there. Fly back tonight or tomorrow. tomorrow? Yeah. Could have flown back tonight, I guess, but I don't know what time the flights are even. It's probably the only time you ever come. My brother oh, went yeah. to school there, so. But I had never visited him when he lived there, so. That was my first time driving through yesterday. It's a cute little town. Actually, this town's cute. Honestly, like the downtown. Yeah. It's a pretty cute mm-hmm. place. It's just so desolate because it's so cold right now. <laughs> I think it was like a couple weeks ago, it was like negative 50 with the wind chill here. Oh. And they said, like, it, the DSU counselor I talked to, she said it hurt to walk in here and breathe. Well, yeah. yeah, they were saying, like, on the news, like, for people in, like, Chicago and all those places, not to take deep breaths because it was, like, freezing their lungs. Yeah. It was insane. It was like the, the deep cold from Canada that came through here that just like it froze everything. I mean, it was like it was so cold in our cells. We were just like going out to eat. We were like, just, like shaking like that because it was it, the heat couldn't keep up. Yeah, uh, not much heat. Plus, this place is old, so like all the windows like were that's oh. they, they couldn't insulate it. Yeah, the wind was just like just 
brush in. What'd you what? say here? Good. I don't really know much about the state or anything about what's going on in here, but like, from what I see, it's, I mean, they say it's decent. Yeah. Like I said, it's a lot better than going anywhere else. Yeah, that's generally the word, is it? If, if you hear it's not as bad as other places, that means it's pretty good. Yeah, so like, I'm just, just hoping and praying that I can help people here and that they'll just keep me around and they will make me like a personal care worker or something. Help other inmates, mentor them, because I guess they have a couple guys that are serving a life sentence that have turned into personal care workers or counselors. Good help other guys when they come in. Maybe I can do that. Hmm. They don't have like the normal programs you would have, but you know, it's not for me. Mm-hmm. Like some guys like try to, they want to get like extra degrees and stuff like that, but they don't have that here. You have to go to one of the other places. Mm-hmm. So if you just said, I want to, you know, do some more education stuff, would you get moved to another place, or is it totally up to them whether you get to do that? It's totally up to them. It's like, I'm not sure how that gets paid for. Right. So, like, I'll just, whatever they want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. If they want to move back to Colorado, I'll be like, why? (laughs) Why do I have to move back to Colorado? Oh, if they told you that, yeah. you would question that? Oh, well, like, a- after a while, if I was here for a long time, and then say, okay, since you leveled down, we'll move you back. I'm like, like what? But, um, no, that would go. Are you scared to level down, though? No, I mean, it'd it take, it take years for that to happen, but, like, I don't know. I don't know how it would be like in Colorado in a DOC there. PSU counselor, she worked in DOC in Colorado and California. She said Colorado looks like California now. Really? She said she's had bad off beginning violence. Really. You can see that. Yeah, I can see. Changing. Yeah, I think people in this part of the country are just different overall. It's really, you know, it's, we kind of talked about that earlier. Colorado's not like it used to be. People here just seem to be nice. I think a lot of transplants probably moving into Colorado from other states. Yeah. Probably affecting that. You know, Dave Cologne, he said they were moving to Florida just to get away from Colorado because it's too much changed. Yeah. It's just so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's just very crazy. Mm-hmm. Houses. Just keep going up and up. Or any kind of like a half an acre of land, you're just gonna pay the same amount of money. Here, I think it's a lot cheaper. But the pay is a lot. It's much lower, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was doing a little reading on the area, and the median house price is like 116,000. And you can't even buy a mailbox in Colorado for that. No. <laughs> no. A PO box That's right true. there. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was reading like Pittsburgh, kind of like the same way. It's like, what, like it's crazy to think about how much it varies from like state to state, city to city. Pittsburgh expensive? No, like oh, oh inexpensive. Yeah, it's like oh, yeah. 100, 150,000 per house. Yeah. Kind of like doing like geez. But you know, deal with the weather and deal with all that kind of stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Like here, I guess you got like April to September. That's your only good months here. The rest of the time you're in your house. Yeah, yeah I don't think I can handle that. Especially if it's not I wouldn't even yeah. like that. Yeah, like that. You can't it's do so that cold every day, right? You start <laughs> using the snowmobile for necessity. That's the problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. You get to the store. Yeah. You have the license plate on the daily snowmobile. Commuter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a problem. We kind of walk around Title Town all the time. Mm-hmm. Are you coming or? Yeah, they just did. They just literally walked away with another person. Oh, they did. We gotta get to the end of the wherever and come back. Mm. This place is huge. It's a long hallway. So, how far is your pod or wherever you're staying from here? All the way down that side. All the other way. Yeah. I think this is like the west side of the building here. Mm. I haven't gone much farther than this. Like, all my stuff's always on the east side. But they got, like, they got huge, like, pods. They'll have, like, over 100 guys in them. So, but they move, like, 40 or 50 people out each day. You have a cellmate, right? Someone no. Oh, you don't have a cellmate? Nope. 
I'm going to go to GP and buy a will. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Most of the cells in my unit are single cells. There's like three that are doubled up, but there's they don't have the overcrowding they have. The mm -hmm. issue they had when I first got here. That's what she was saying. There was a, like 400 extra inmates. Yeah. But they ended up shipping out to different places. So. Yeah, I never knew what the what the assessment part of it was as far as like how, how many people they had coming in and out. But it was like a got yeah, people coming in and out everywhere. Mm -hmm. So is it like a general supervision type thing like Will County is? We get a, with like a big room with the pods on the top, or how is that? No, it's like you have a sergeant desk at the front of it and then a hallway of, of like 20 cells. Uh, okay. And they just kind of walk back and forth. It's, the RDC was like, you have like like a cul-de-sac of cells, three tiers, and then like the, the perch for the sergeant right here, you can see and everybody's cell just from looking around. Right. But this one's like they gotta walk up and down. This used to be like a mental hospital or something. They said, oh. like back in the day. Okay. It's yeah. definitely old. I mean, you can you can hear those pipes like vibrating around the walls, mm. and it's like, oh, that old bus. <laughs> Is it like exceptionally freezing in here? It's just been cold in the last twenty minutes. Yes. Yeah, it gets. Whew. Depending on which way the wind's blowing, depends on which side. But it gets cold. It gets, it gets cold. It was like a six foot snow drift outside my window for a little while. It's finally starting to go down. Somewhere it was like negative 50. I mean, we're the ones that chose to come in February, but. <laughs> He's, she's ready for you now. Oh, okay. Oh, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you too. Thanks. Take care of yourself, Thank okay? You Thank you. Thank you. Have a safe flight. Thank you.